As 2023 beckons, 2022 says, hang on. Today is one of the best days of the year on the sports calendar. The college football playoff semis are next, but first, it's the 89th All-State Sugar Bowl. One last game for two of the best players in the nation. The Heisman winner from a year ago, Bryce Young, potentially the top pick in the NFL draft, as is two-time All-American Will Anderson, making likely their final appearance at Alabama. As the fifth-ranked Crimson Tide face the Big 12 champion and ninth-ranked Kansas State Wildcats. And hi, everybody, Dave Pash alongside Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganbill down on the field. This is the Ram Trucks kickoff. Well, Alabama has been in the national championship game six of the last seven years. So naturally, not even making the college football playoff is a disappointment for Nick Saban, Alabama players, and Alabama fans. But still, it's a year to be celebrated for the Tide. Ten wins for the 15th consecutive year. Two losses by a total of four points, both on the last play and in an era, Dusty, where players left and right are deciding to skip bowl games. The best players, not only on the field today, but in the country, are playing. No question. In a world in bowl season, we talk about opt-outs. We're going to talk today about everybody opting in from both teams. This game matters, and two of the best in all of college football. Last year, Heisman moment against Auburn. Bryce Young, magical. When the moments are their biggest, we saw it in the Iron Bowl. We saw it in the SEC championship game before he hoisted the hardware in New York City. And this year, biggest moments, even in a losing effort. Watch this, the escapability. You can't get the guy down, eyes down the field, locates his targets as good as anybody in college football, capped it off with a second Iron Bowl win. The two years in Tuscaloosa were magical, as good as we've seen in college football the last couple. But to me, the best player in the country, it's the outside linebacker and defensive end, Will Anderson. The speed to power, his ability to force offensive tackles to come forward. You see the strength, press the tackle off of him and swallow the quarterback. You like first steps? Watch the first step quickness in the hands. He worked on it all offseason. Stab slip, and the rip comes up before he closes to the quarterback. And not just a pass rusher, he can do it all, ladies and gentlemen. Put his hand in the ground. Watch him snap that tight end back. Head pops back. The punch and the disruption as he splits a double. Over 50 tackles for loss in the last two seasons. Boy, we're in for a treat here today. Two of the absolute best. And Tom, I know you're a big fan of Bryce Young. Dusty, you know I am. Listen, he's not going to win the Underwear Olympics at his pro day. There's going to be bigger. There's going to be stronger. There are going to be players with stronger arms. But he's going to check all the intangible boxes. You take a look at anticipation, timing, a knack for knowing when to get the ball out, and then ball placement. You know, there's one thing to talk about accuracy, and you can throw an accurate, catchable ball. But ball placement versus tight coverage and throwing the ball only where his target can get it and maybe the final two most uncoachable traits, mental toughness and competitive temperament. Bryce Young has that in droves. The Crimson Tide. 15 consecutive 10 win seasons. If they get another win today, it'll be their 12th straight 11 win campaign. 17th Sugar Bowl, most all time, nine and seven throughout the history of Alabama in this very special game. Ram Truck season recap for Kansas State making its Sugar Bowl debut. They were picked fifth in their own conference preseason. They beat TCU just a few weeks ago in the Big 12 championship game. First 10 win season since their last Big 12 title a decade ago and three wins against AP top 10 teams, a school record. Just an awesome season for Coach Kleiman and Kansas State. Stepped up time and time again all throughout the year. They got some special players on both sides of the football.
We are closing in on kickoff. You'll hear from Coach Kleiman. The coin toss coming up as well. You're watching the Ram Trucks kickoff from New Orleans and the All-State Sugar Bowl. College football playoff semifinals. And the college football playoff national championship on ESPN. Welcome to the All-State Sugar Bowl from Caesars Superdome in New Orleans. It's the 89th annual and the sixth time on New Year's Eve. The last was back in 1995, four straight years prior to that from 1972 to 75. First ever meeting between the Crimson Tide and Kansas State. The captains including Bryce Young and Will Anderson for Alabama heading to midfield. There's also some star power for Kansas State. They have one of the most dynamic players in the country. He's also one of the smallest. Not hard to find there, as you just saw the, the captains for K-State coming out. And that's Deuce Vaughn back-to-back 1,400-yard seasons on the ground for the Wildcat running back. Big Ten officiating crew, our referee is Larry Smith. Assisting us today with the coin toss is Kurt Winter, Vice President of Marketing, Allstate Sugar Bowl, and Allstate Insurance Company, if you will. What's your choice? He shows hands. So Kansas State's going to get the ball first. Let's hear now from their head coach, Chris Kleiman. He's with Tom. Well, Coach, you've been on that other sideline. You've been the hunted. You come into this game as the hunter. How have you prepared your football team to be victorious today? Well, it's time to rise up. Our guys have had a great couple weeks of preparation. They're excited for the opportunity. We know we've got a great team uh, that we're going against in Alabama, but uh, we've got a pretty good football team here that's Big 12 champs. We're ready to roll. The emotion of winning a Big 12 championship, then the excitement of a Sugar Bowl berth. But you got three weeks to prepare for it. How have you gotten your team to peak at the right time and play their best today? Well, it's it's power, power belief, power of player ownership. Our guys have taken control, taken ownership of that team, and uh, we got a great fan base. Look at these people out here in New Orleans. It's going to be a great day. Congrats, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. All Thanks, right. guys. And what Tom was referring to was Chris Kleiman was the head coach at North Dakota State, won four national titles. And on the other sideline, Nick Saban, 19 years ago, won his first national championship on this field. Then he was the head coach at LSU. He's won six championships at Alabama. Will Reichard will kick it deep, and Malik Knowles back for Kansas State, along with Phillip Brooks. One of the best college football days of the year is underway. New Year's Eve 2022. Here is Knowles hesitated and gets met at the 17 yard line and dropped. It's been a really interesting year for Kansas State at the quarterback position. Will Howard, who previously had really struggled throwing the football, he had started a bunch of games in 2020 and 2021, but didn't even play the first six games this year because of Adrian Martinez. Then he's inserted midway through the season and becomes one of the most improved players in the country, helping Kansas State to a conference title. He's been sensational down the stretch of the season. Confidence oozing out of every pass that he throws, really playing as well as anybody in the Big 12 Conference. And he'll throw it on first down, and Cade Warner with the catch. Son of the Hall of Famer Kurt Warner, gain of three for Cade, who's in his sixth season. 
You think about Will Howard when talking with him yesterday. He told us one of the reasons he struggled previously, he lost confidence. But he got that confidence back working out with Bryce Young in the summer in California. He watched Bryce Young and some of the other star quarterbacks throw the ball. He said, I can play with these guys. And he certainly has. And now Deuce Vaughn with his first touch. And he comes up just short of the first down. Gain of about five. It'll be third and one. A nice physical double team there by Cooper, BB, Hayden, Gillum. Love to run that duo. Hard physical doubles at the line. This Kansas State offensive line, very technically sound. All five starters have started all 13 games. There's continuity. They got their hands full today against this Crimson Tide D-line. And Alabama eighth in the nation on third down defensively. They stack the box here and a pass play. It's caught. For, by Sinnott, breaks a tackle up the sideline and finally knocked out of bounds. One of the most important players for Kansas State. 23 yards for Ben Sinnott. Well, Ben Sinnott has been awesome for this offense. First team all Big 12 tied and just sneak him out into the flats. Lined up as a wing, nobody identifies him. Easy pitch and catch and a big chunk after the missed tackle. They go back to Deuce Vaughn. Down to the 45 for a gain of five. Vaughn is from the Austin area, but did not even get a power five offer except Kansas State. His father, Christopher, is a scout with the Dallas Cowboys. Just so patient, picks and chooses until he finds an open spot. He's got great burst, he hides behind those old linemen, tough to find. Here's a jet sweep to Knowles, and he's wrapped up at the 43 yard line. Brought down by Jordan Battle, three-year starter and a captain. Jordan Battle, this secondary, it is ferocious for Alabama. Three different guys are on the AP All-American second or third team. And Jordan Battle's played a lot of football, very instinctive. Nice job fighting through that Deuce Vaughn block and making the play. And that's the thing about Vaughn. He'll block, he'll catch. He's one of the best pass catchers out of the backfield. Here's Howard, and it's caught first down to the 39-yard line. It's Phillip Brooks with the catch. Brian Branch in coverage, another third down conversion. Well, you'll see Branch working out of the slot. It's going to be a simple out, and there's too much cushion there from Branch. Quick, easy hitter for Will Howard on time, and another conversion. Play fake, Howard hit as he throws downfield, and it's picked off at the 21-yard line. Intercepted by Jordan Battle. It was Byron Young that had the pressure on Will Howard. And just the third pick of the year by Howard. Well, Deuce Vaughn is such a versatile piece of this offense, not just as a runner, but also a pass catcher. They try to hit him on the wheel down the sidelines. Excellent read there by the veteran Jordan Battle. There is a penalty marker down on the other side of the field. Sideline warning, interception team. This is the first warning. Well, it was a fast start for Kansas State, but the secondary of Alabama with an early interception and a key takeaway. So just the third pick of the season for Will Howard which ends a very good opening drive. And now Bryce Young takes the stage. Heisman winner a year ago. Even though the numbers weren't as gaudy in 22, played just as well. Alabama starting on the 21-yard line. Here's Jameer Gibbs. And he is stood up at the point of attack and driven back by a true freshman, B.J. Payne. No gain, maybe even a loss of one. So Bryce Young, 27th career start, likely his last, headed for the NFL, probably the number one pick. Already second in Alabama history in passing yards, and again, he was just a two-year starter. Had almost 5,000 yards a year ago. They go empty here on second and 11. For the junior from Pasadena, 21 years old. Pressure off the edge, Young, everybody covered. And so Young wisely throws it away. Brandon Mott with pressure. Good coverage down the field as Mott came late. 
Take a look at the take a look at the today's Chick-fil-A impact players. Jameer Gibbs, versatility at the running back position, such a weapon catching the football. Brian Branch, as good as a nickel safety as you'll find in college football. We've talked a lot about the two-time All-American Deuce Vaughn and Felix Anudike Uzama, the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, 91, an outstanding edge rusher and plays the run very well. And 20 sacks for him the last two years. So third down and 11, Young from the pocket. Incomplete pass intended for Jermaine Burton. Julius Brents in coverage. It's a three and out for Bama. Which is a timing route, a comeback for Jermaine Burton. He never gets out of his break. Ball delivered a little bit too early, but Julian Brents in great position driving on that football. An outstanding start for this Kansas State defense after the Will Howard interception. Yeah, Dusty, I don't think he thought that he was coming out to the outside on that break and also took it a little deep. James Burnup on the punt. And the fair catch made by Brooks at the 38. A little extracurricular activity, but no flags. 41-yard punt, no return. Kansas State's interception doesn't hurt him. The Allstate Sugar Bowl is brought to you by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. AT&T 5G, too much college football is never too much. And Expedia, made to travel. Arguably the biggest goal line stand in school history for Kansas State. Let's go back to that interception, though, thrown by Will Howard on the last offensive they series. They love to incorporate Deuce Vaughn in the throw game. A a very important piece of their passing attack. Deuce Vaughn on the wheel. You see Jordan Battle inserted inside zone coverage, reads it the whole way. Will Howard never saw him. An early takeaway for the senior safety in this Alabama defense. Dusty, really good pre-snap alignment there by Battle to not show his hand, because I, I think Howard thought he had Vaughn streaking down the sideline by himself. He never saw the safety and Jordan Battle read it the whole way. Full house backfield here on first down, and it's just a handoff to Vaughn, and he gets bottled up at the line of scrimmage. Henry To'o To'o was in there first, first team all SEC middle linebacker, who are the coaches are saying will follow in their footsteps. They think he'll be a coach when he's done playing. Boy, Pete Golding, defensive coordinator, just raved about his football IQ since the day he stepped on campus a year ago missed the first three days of camp by day five he was holding his own linebacker meetings transfer from Tennessee off play action passes caught by Cade Warner his second grab already it's a 10 yard gain into Alabama territory well the play action it gets the linebackers to flow away and then you see see battle sitting back soft and an easy find of Cade Warner they got Adrian Martinez in the game at quarterback. 47 career starts at Nebraska and Kansas State. Many more appearances, but this is his first bowl appearance. Tries to run Vaughn nowhere to go that time. Knifing through the offensive line. Toe Toe with the takedown and a two-yard loss. And Will Howard comes back in. Really nice job downhill by Toe Toe, avoiding the blocks creating the negative play. You reference for Adrian Martinez. Could never get to a bowl game at Nebraska. Did an outstanding job both with his mobility, taking better care of the football early in the season. And Will Howard has just taken his game in this offense to other heights. Howard's pass pulled in. A lot of cushion out there. Brooks being defended by Branch. And it's a first down, a gain of 12 inside the 40. But Phillip Brooks is a really nice slot receiver. Branch, as you mentioned, given a lot of coverage over, a little, a lot of cushion over there in the coverage. Easy pitch and catch. And this Kansas State offense really moving the football very effectively here early in this game. Well, you look at their last six games, they've scored 40 points per game during that stretch. One of the best in the country over the last half of the season. Off play action, looking downfield, taking a shot, and overthrows Knowles. Incomplete. Kool Aid McKinstry who's one of the smartest players on the Alabama defense. Excellent young corner from Birmingham, a sophomore in coverage down there. Well, play action pass on early down, move the pocket, want to take a shot, tried to double move with Knowles. But Kool-Aid McKinstry 
a cool customer outside, one of the elite cornerbacks in all of college football. Nice job on the coverage. Just the second incompletion for Howard. The other was the interception. Here's Vaughn getting a tote and able to go under a defender and get to the 34 yard line. There have been so many people for obvious reasons that have made the comparison to former Kansas State star Darren Sproles because of the height and the weight. And it's warranted. They're very similar, yes. but Deuce Vaughn has made his own name. Absolutely. Two time All American. By the way, I had to play against Darren Sproles. I still have nightmares watching Deuce Vaughn on the film. An absolute pleasure. One of the great and exciting players in college football. One of the great young men. A million dollar smile for Mr. Vaughn. Likely his last college game going to the NFL. Howard. And it's pulled in for a first down. It's been sent at the tight end again, his second catch. And this is twice now that Kansas State is moving right down the field on Alabama. Well, Senate's become one of the go-to guys on third down. You see the collision at the top of the route with the safety, DeMarco Hellums. And that ball's coming out right as Senate is getting into his break. Helps that he's so close with his quarterback, Will Howard, timing on that route, perfection, and another third down conversion for Will Howard in this Wildcat offense. Deuce tripped up, gets down to the 20. Boy, maybe a touchdown saving tackle by Helms. You miss him in the hole, and all of a sudden with that speed, that second gear he has, he might be out the gate. It's a gain of five on the play, and play nine of the drive is coming up. How about the jump cuts, though? Just beep, beep, just pick his way, pick his way, hop here, hop there, and then a little burst. Tell you, Dusty, when you're standing behind the line of scrimmage, it is hard to find him, man. I know. He gets behind those linemen. You just can't locate him. Here he is again, trying to get outside. And a nice tackle by Branch at the 23. So that's a loss of three. Bring up third down and eight. Well, Brian Branch, he's so good around the line of scrimmage. You see him set this edge. Really nice job. Staying outside of Knowles, keeping that outside shoulder free and getting the elusive Deuce Vaughn to the ground. Nice TFL setting up third and long. Will Anderson's just come into the game. Haven't seen him a ton out there. Two-time unanimous first-team All-America, the first in Alabama history. Play fake. And then a throw across the middle. Knocked down intended for Warner, but broken up by McKinstry. The Kansas State fans want a flag but won't get it. It's fourth and eight. It's man to man coverage. Kool Aid McKinstry gets that hand on there a little bit early, but he gets the arm over the top and let him play here early. I know the Kansas State fans wanted a flag for pass interference. I'm okay with the no call there, Dave. I am too. I'll tell you, Dusty, they got to do more of this press and get in the face of Kansas State receivers. Don't let them run free. Ty Zentner on for a 41 yard field goal try has not missed to this point and is still perfect. Now 10 for 10 on the season and the Wildcats get the first points of the game. College football playoff semifinals are next on ESPN. Michigan TCU in the Verbo Fiesta Bowl, Georgia, Ohio State in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Who you got in each game? Oh, my goodness. Put me on the spot, Dave Pash. I think TCU, Max Duggan can keep it close. I had to pick Michigan. And then the other game, I'm not picking against the defending national champions. They are too physical. They are too talented on both sides of the line of scrimmage. And you saw there all the ways you can watch the games today. Mega cast, Pat McAfee show ESPN2. What about you? Do you agree? You got the two favorites? I got two blowouts. Whoa! Yeah. I think TCU's Georgia, be Michigan. Able to keep it close. Be interesting to see how they respond after the loss yeah. to Kansas State in the Big 12 championship game. Touchback, it'll come out to the 25 yard line. This season, all state will celebrate every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, all state. You always wonder how a team will respond after losing a championship game. 
Also, after winning it, we weren't sure Kansas State really didn't get a chance to even celebrate winning the Big 12 title because Alabama's next on their schedule. TCU's got to find a way to get what they had back prior to that loss in Arlington. It helps to have a guy like Max Duggan, who against K-State was sensational, awesome all year as he was runner-up for this year's Heisman Trophy. Great start to this game for Kansas State. Alabama nothing on that first drive. Let's see what happens on drive two. Here's Gibbs. And a good stop there at the 31 yard line by Drake Cheatham. Jameer Gibbs a transfer from Georgia Tech. He leads the team in receptions and he's the running back. Closing in on 900 yards as a rusher on the season. Second team all SEC. He's got great vision, jump cuts, acceleration, tough to tackle. Just about everything. Bill O'Brien raved about the addition of Jameer Gibbs. There's Young from the pocket, taking a shot, got a receiver wide open. Wow, you don't normally see that from Bryce Young unless Burton made a mistake. That was an easy touchdown. Young struggling early on, one for four. Yeah, just complete miss by Bryce Young. Jermaine Burton on the corner route. Nobody accounts for him. That ball well underthrown of a wide open Jermaine Burton. Slow start. Four of the nation's best quarterbacks. That's twice now, Dusty. We have not seen quarterback and wide receiver being on the same page. Mm -hmm. Been problematic throughout the year with a receiving core that hasn't been as productive as years past. Third down and three, and the play clock down to two. Pressured up the middle. Young's pass is caught for a first down. Ja'Cory Brooks to midfield, a 19-yard gain. I like the timing on the in-cutting dig route. Ja'Cory Brooks, really nice job running that route. Ball on time, on target. A nice third down pickup. Gibbs running to the right side, picks up a couple yards. We met with Bryce Young yesterday. Such an impressive young man. We also met with offensive coordinator Bill O'Brien. And Coach O'Brien, he's been the head coach at the Texans and at Penn State. He said on Tuesday, he has to be prepared to meet with Bryce Young because he said Young will have watched film on every single game leading up to that week and coaches will have to have clips ready to show Young because he's going to have clips already prepared. You rarely hear that from a college quarterback. Young feeling the rush but sacked back at the 40 yard line by Daniel Green the leader of the Kansas State defense. It's a loss of 10. Boy Green's going to get credit for this sack. But it's really the coverage down the field. You see Daniel Green going to be a late insert as an added rusher. Gets tripped up, falls, hops right back up, and gets the elusive Bryce Young to the ground. Great play by the senior linebacker. One of the heart and soul pieces of this Wildcat defense. Set in third and very long for Alabama. Keep in mind, too, there's some injuries on the offensive line for Alabama. A lot of backups playing. Young feeling the pressure. Dumping it off on third and 19, well covered, and a big hit. Let's see, as a flag is thrown, McClellan drilled. Now a second flag is thrown. Well, that'd be a big mistake by Kansas State. Three penalty flags are actually down. You wonder if it's for the same thing. Kansas State yeah, I, I, normally I very disciplined. Side block here. Personal foul, blindside block, yeah. offense number 19. So that's on Kendrick Law. New point of emphasis in college football. Watch Kendrick Law, the true freshman, having to play because of a lot of portal. It's Daniel Green, blindside block. That's a huge point of emphasis. We've seen calls like that made all throughout the course of the season. Coach Klein in Kansas State can decline this penalty. Yep. So the second punt already coming up for Alabama, and you saw from that look as well the hit by Austin Moore for Kansas State. The receiver for Alabama was still in bounds. Yep. It wasn't a late hit. There was nothing aggressive. So Brooks on for the punt return. Kansas State, which has been able to move the ball on Alabama rather easily here in the first quarter, going to be back on offense. Could not have scripted a better start if you're Chris Kleiman in Kansas State. 
Burn up on a punt. And the fair catch made at the 12 by Brooks. Back to New Orleans in a moment. Bell is bringing the Live Moss student section and its students to the All-State Sugar Bowl. Today they're picking up the tab for students from each school so that these passionate fans can come cheer on their teams. It is a full house here at the Caesar Superdome. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganville. It's the first New Year's Six game for Kansas State. Now they played in the Cotton and Fiesta Bowls under the BCS format. They lost both of those. They won the Fiesta Bowl back in 1997. But if they were to win the day, this would be one of the biggest wins, obviously, in program history for the Wildcats. Cap off one of the best seasons in the history of the program. Been phenomenal all year. Here's Vaughn with some room past the 20, and Vaughn might be gone. He's got incredible speed, outrunning Bama defenders. Inside the 20, Vaughn inside the 10, dies for the end zone. Touchdown, K-State. Touchdown run for one of the most dynamic players in all of college football. He's a different type of deuce, but there was a back deuce McAllister. For eight years for the Saints that used to do that to NFL defenses. Career long run for Deuce Vaughn. When we talked about this offensive line and their ability to flat out get it done. Take a look here. We're going to get the center as well as the backside guard. Get out and make a nice key block that Deuce Vaughn is going to cut off of. Excellent double team. As you saw Cooper Beebe, the All-American, come down, get up to the second level, and it doesn't take a big hole for Deuce Vaughn to hit the gas, the afterburners, and take it to the house. Excellent job up front at the line of scrimmage. And Deuce Vaughn does the rest. Finds a way to get in the end zone, outrunning that Alabama defense with an excellent dive for a Wildcat touchdown. The only active player in the country with 3,000 rushing yards and 1,200 receiving yards. First team All-American as an all-purpose back. He's already got over 100 yards in the quarter. His ninth touchdown of the season. And Alabama down 10-0. Jameer Gibbs on the return. Gibbs trying to get the corner. And drilled out of bounds. Deuce Vaughn is nothing short of sensational. I think he is arguably the most exciting player in college football. Back to back consensus. All Americans, so good. You see him between the tackles, even at his stature. They'll line him up out wide. He does everything. And Dave already in the first quarter against Alabama over 100 yards here today. Kansas State as a team has 170. Alabama has 26 and negative nine rushing yards. Alabama hasn't gotten a clean shot on him yet. Bryce Young has struggled throwing the ball three for six. Missed a touchdown under through a receiver on a deep ball. Let's see what he does here. Taking a shot. Some contact downfield, but the ball overthrown. Jermaine Burton again was the intended receiver. Don't know if he was knocked down or if he just it, fell down. He just fell down. Nobody even touched him. Jermaine Burton running down the sideline on a deep shot, and he just trips and falls. No contact whatsoever for Kansas State. And Bryce Young, Jermaine Burton continue to not be able to come up with a big play. On second and ten, here's McClellan, and he is popped. Picked off by Josh Hayes and dropped for no gain. You know, we talked with Nick Saban. Watch Josh Hayes come down from that safety position. Excellent job identifying, recognizing 
and getting a nice finish on McClellan. We talked with Nick Saban yesterday about years where they didn't make the college football playoff, yeah. how they've handled these moments, and he said, not well. We haven't handled them well. He felt they had a good week of preparation, the right mindset, but clearly sleepwalking here in the Big Easy early. Young on third down and 10. Pressure on. Young steps up and completes it. And Jameer Gibbs is free in the K-State territory. Past the 30, past the 20, and finally taken down by Drake Chatham after a 59-yard catch and run. Just absolutely huge play here. You're going to see the looper. 15 hits come around. He comes clean, but stepping up in the pocket by Bryce Young, finding that shallow crosser on the mesh. And then Jameer Gibbs out in the open field. Tells Deuce Vaughn, anything you can do, I can match it. Huge play. Here's Gibbs again, and he doesn't get anything. Tackled at the 11 by Austin Moore. That's a good point on Jameer Gibbs in comparing him and what he means to Alabama. It's very similar to Deuce Vaughn for K-State. Well, Daniel Green, we asked him yesterday, what do you do about Jameer Gibbs as a receiver out of the backfield? He kind of chuckled and said, huh, we have 22 to deal with every single day in practice, so there's nobody that could better prepare us for what Jameer Gibbs brings. But a big conversion and chunk play for Gibbs on a crucial third down. Good response, though, by Kansas State. Negative one yard on that last carry. Here's Gibbs down to the five. So he gets about six before Desmond Purnell and Cheatham get the tackle. Third and goal, a minute remaining here in the first quarter. You mentioned the response by Alabama. That would have been pretty devastating. Quick three and out if they don't convert. Six feels a lot better than three in this spot. But for this stack on the near side, looks like Latu and Corey Brooks make it a, make it a bunch trips package. Young to the air. Has time. Everybody covered. Young steps up. Now throws. Complete. Back of the end zone. Touchdown. Isaiah Bond, his first of the year. Well, the coaches say Bond might be the next great Alabama receiver. And he comes up big here on third and goal. I just love the eyes of Bryce Young. Looked like he had Brooks in the middle of the end zone, didn't find him. Stays patient, stays poised, eyes down the field, and really nice from Isaiah Bond, the true freshman, breaking off that route, running to green grass on the back line, and a big touchdown for the tie. Zero panic. And you knew that even though Bryce Young had struggled momentarily, he was going to make some great plays, and yep. he did it just after Kansas State had its biggest play of the game. As you look at the parents of Bryce Young, the season been full of mayhem. Let's check in and see what he's up to. I'm the team mascot, and boy, am I running late. And if you have cut rate car insurance, the cost to cover that might tank your season. So get all state and be better protected from mayhem. Well, Bryce Young. You think about whether it was the Texas game, how many times against Tennessee, comebacks. LSU, even though they lost? Yeah. Just Bill O'Brien called him brilliant. And it's not just that. There's a toughness. You look at him and you know, Nick Saban compared him to a point guard yeah. in basketball in terms of how he directs the offense. He, he kind of looks like an NBA point guard. And a smaller one, a six foot, 190 pound quarterback, but he plays tough. He's just so cool, calm, collected. The poise absolutely off the charts for a quarterback of his stature. Here's Brooks for Kansas State on the return. And Alabama's down there and is dropped at the 10-yard line. Roy Dell Williams with a great special teams play. Boy, quickly momentum shifted in a big way. No question about that. Uncle Mo. In the building right now, <laughs> felt like Kansas State was in complete control. Had them in third and long. That conversion to Jameer Gibbs, that might be the play that sparks some life for this Crimson Tide football team. This could be a battle of attrition, boys. See the numbers for Will Howard. He's been able to move the team down the field twice. They had to settle for a field goal on one and then the interception on the other. Deuce Vaughn. 
And Tim Smith wraps him up. Short gain for Vaughn. Will Anderson in there too. First time we've called his name. Say we haven't called Will Anderson's name at all so far throughout the course of this ball game. Expect to see him get going at some point. Very entertaining opening quarter here in New Orleans. Kansas State, thanks to a huge play, 88 yard run by Deuce Vaughn, took the lead 10 0, but Alabama bounced right back with a Bryce Young touchdown pass. Three point lead for the Wildcats after one. Welcome back to the All State Sugar Bowl. Matchup of top 10 teams, ninth ranked Kansas State, the Big 12 champs, leading number five Alabama 10 7. Alabama has not lost three games in a season since 2010. They were down 10 0, but Bryce Young brought them back to within three. And now Kansas State faced with a second and eight. And Howard throwing to the sideline, and it's high and off the mark, going for Ben Sinnott. Coverage by DeMarco Hellams. Tom, they're changing up in the coverage. A lot tighter. Corners press yep. at the line of scrimmage. Safeties walk down a little bit tighter. This is kind of what you and I anticipated coming into the game. They played a lot more cushion early. I bet we see them really challenge these receivers and tight ends throughout the rest of this game. We've got to because they've got length and athletic advantages. They've got to use it up near the line of scrimmage. On third and eight, Howard in trouble, drilled as he throws, knocked away by McKinstry, incomplete, intended for Warner. So Kansas State will have to punt. Well, Dallas Turner is an electric pass rusher. You'll see him work back inside, do a nice job getting the pressure, playing a little bit of spy technique, and then he closed on the football in excellent coverage, man-to-man -man there by Kool-Aid McKinstry. Really, really good effort on that series by Alabama. Looks like starting to settle in a little bit defensively. Ty Zentner on to punt. Only power five guy to kick off, punt, and be the place kicker. That's a good one. Fair caught by McKinstry at the 38-yard line. 51-yard punt and no return. More bowl action on Monday. Rely Quest Bowl, Mississippi State, Illinois. You got the Cheese and Citrus Bowl and ABC between LSU and Purdue. Tulane and USC should be a very interesting Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. And then the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential, Penn State, and Utah. Fired up for that Tulane USC game. We had the American Conference Championship. What a job by Willie Fritz. Excellent job by Lincoln Riley at USC as well. Caleb Williams in must-see TV, and well, Utah Penn State's gonna be fun too. Caleb Williams, the Heisman winner. Last year's Heisman winner, Bryce Young, back to work. First down on the Bama 37, they run Gibbs, and Gibbs trying to get the corner. Josh Hayes tracks him down at the 40. It's a gain of three on the play. Really good team defense there by Kansas State. Defensive coordinator Joe Klanderman, really proud of his team. Got some real toughness to him. You could tell he was just glowing about that goal line stand and see Josh Hayes now flying around, making plays at or around the line of scrimmage. It's been an aggressive attacking defense here so far for Kansas State. No second down and long here for Alabama. We're talking about Caleb Williams winning the Heisman at USC. Bryce Young originally committed to USC. And then his first year at Bama was the backup to Mac Jones. Running Gibbs to the right, past the 45 and stiff arming. Pushed out of bounds, but got the first down. Gain of 10 on the play for Gibbs. Really nice block by Robbie Oots. Tight end slash fullback leading the way. Key block on the linebacker. And an excellent cut right off it by Jameer Gibbs to move the chains. They old Nick Saban on the sideline said, hey, uh, Coach O'Brien, let's just line up and run this thing. Power football there from Alabama on second down. Now from the 49-yard line, here's Gibbs off the left side. Dumped after a gain of a couple. Khalid Duke was in there on the tackle. It's interesting how Gibbs, you, know, you think about Alabama and 
at least the last several years how the ball was spread around a lot whether it was running the ball or throwing it where Gibbs is he's the first guy he's the featured guy outside of Bryce Young in that offensive side of the ball leads the team with 42 receptions and leads the team in rushing kind of wonder where would they be this year offensively without him Bryce Young off play action deep ball going again for Burton this one's caught inside the five and down to the two. They finally connect. 47 yards. First and goal from the two. Well, they missed the first two times on the deep shot, but working from the slot, just that deep over route outruns Hayes, and that ball doesn't miss this time. Excellent downfield connection from Bryce Young to Jermaine Burton. Just a beautifully thrown ball to Burton. And now they run it. McClellan fighting for the goal line, but comes up short, pushed back by B.J. Payne. Such a quick response from Alabama after falling down 10-0. Two big chunk plays. The Gibbs third down conversion. Now this big shot down the field to Jermaine Burton, and just a yard away from taking the lead. Second and goal inside the one. McClellan again is back there with Young. Young throwing, and it's caught for a touchdown by Cameron Latu. His fourth touchdown of the season. And just like that, the tide in front. Two quick touchdown passes for Bryce Young in about five minutes of game time. Well, I like this play design from Bill O'Brien. Motion Latu back inside as if an extra blocker for the run game. Bond on the outside, going to run just a little slant and opens up the flats for an easy touchdown toss to Cameron Latu. Dusty, you look at the play action coming off of those two plays because of the early success on rundowns for Alabama. Great mixture. Reichard with the extra point. Well, they've been looking for a big shot down the field to Jermaine Burton. And third time's a charm. Big shot sets him up in the red zone. And the second touchdown toss for Bryce Young to Mr. Law 2. Bama on top, 14-10. Want to stay focused on the action? Just tell Siri, turn on Do Not Disturb. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganbill back. At the All-State Sugar Bowl, Bryce Young with two quick touchdown passes. So he moves into a tie with A.J. McCarron for second all-time with 77 touchdown passes. Tua is the all-time leader with 87. And again, Bryce Young, a two-year starter, did that in just two seasons. Two-time captain and the potential number one draft pick in the spring. It's muffed by Brooks, who was signaling for the fair catch. The fair catch. The offside by the kicking team. So seeing a touchback. Did signal for the fair catch. Offside. Kitchen team number 19. Five yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot. We'll have a re kick. Okay, so a lot going on there. I'll have a re kick because of the offside in Alabama. Yeah. Because he recovered Can't. in the field of play, would not have been a touchback. I thought the referee said touchback, but he would not have been. Kansas State was very fortunate yes, there. That, that there ball was the would have been backed penalty. up inside the five yard line had Alabama not been offsides. And so you, know, you got Phillip Brooks now coming to the sideline, and Malik Knowles is out there to return the kick now. Saban not going to be happy about that. It's been one of the issues for Alabama this year the penalties. The most penalized Alabama team under Nick Saban. When you think of this level of dominance Alabama's had all over college football. It's been their discipline that's been so key, and that has not been the case this year. Noel signaling for the fair catch, so it will come out to the 25. 
Well, to your point on the penalties, they're among the worst in college football. You know, Nick Saban was telling us yesterday, you know, we've had obviously our, our fair share of great wins, but I remember the losses. And then he just out of nowhere as he was talking about one of the losses is your Tennessee. He said the last five plays of the game we were awful and here's how and he broke every single one of them down and it all came down to mental mistakes discipline and boy I thought he was going to come out of his chair he, <laughs> got, he went from like cool calm collected he started thinking about those five plays and he got upset very very quickly here's Deuce Vaughn able to sneak his way through a hole for a couple yards Vaughn had over 100 yards in that first quarter the first time Alabama's given up 100 yards to a running back in a quarter since they did it in the Sugar Bowl to Ezekiel Elliott of Ohio State back in 2015. Boy, Zeke had himself a day in that game. Over 200 yards on the ground for Zeke. He followed that up like a 240-yard game against Oregon. Unbelievable run for Zeke and Ohio State in the first year of the playoffs. And the Buckeyes, of course, playing the night. You got Martinez out there. Quarterback, he's a very good runner. Pushed out of bounds. Close to the line to gain by Jordan Battle, and it's going to be a first down. For the veteran Martinez. Well, a lot of pool schemes from this Kansas State offense. We're going to pull guard. We're going to pull the center and get out in front. And Adrian Martinez, the best aspect of his game is as a runner. Deuce Vaughn out in front as a little lead blocker. A nice pickup to get Adrian Martinez incorporated into this ballgame. You know, it's so interesting, too, in talking with Will Howard about the relationship with Adrian Martinez, who, again, has played in so many games. Will said, you know, I, I wanted to not like him, but yeah. we became best friends. We're roommates. Really good culture at Kansas State, which allows for guys that are competitors to become really good friends. Vaughn wrapped up and driven to the ground by Branch. But after a gain of three or four. And that's when you think about what Chris Kleiman has done, whether it was at North Dakota State or here at Kansas State. It's about culture. It's about player development. They're not getting the same kind of players that Alabama's getting, but they still find a way to win a lot of games in a great conference like the Big 12. Discipline, toughness, selflessness. And as this team is comprised, a player-led team with complete and total buy-in from its leaders. Big hit in the backfield by Branch, and down goes Vaughn. At the 34 for a four yard loss. Boy, Brian Branch is sensational. The film just jumps off the charts when he's such a good blitzer, times it up perfectly, comes inside the block of DJ Giddens and a big TFL on Deuce Vaughn. Brian Branch can have a big decision to make after the season. Second team AP All American. And Pete Golding said, He's the best player on this football team, and that's quite the mouthful considering what this roster looks like. Third and 11. Howard standing in there and completing it to Warner, who breaks a tackle and gets the first down. Cade Warner in his sixth college season, like Martinez, a transfer from Nebraska, has had a great season. How about Will Howard just standing firm in that pocket? Body's coming around him, stands up there. I love the effort by Cade Warner fighting through that Kool-Aid McKinstry tackle and getting the first down. There's the Warner family. You see Kurt, the Hall of Famer, standing up. Kurt's final NFL game was in this stadium in the playoffs against the Saints. Cade's final college game in this stadium here in the Allstate Sugar Bowl. So cool. Awesome. Martinez taking off and up to midfield for a gain of four. You were you were a part of that, right, Dave? You were in the house for that final game of Kurt Warner. Yeah, this is kind of you know you're getting old when you're calling games for the son, when you called games for the dad. There's uh, Cade and Kurt. And in talking with Chris Kleiman, the head coach, Kleiman was at Northern Iowa when Kurt was a player there. And coach told us we would not have gotten Cade Warner if not for my history with Kurt. On second and six, Howard throwing again to Warner. And Warner fighting through the arm tackle attempt by Elix. Eli Ricks gets another first down. That's four catches. Penalty marker down. Eli Ricks got caught peeking inside. Flats wide open there for Warner to get up the sidelines and get the first down. We'll see if it stands. That would be the fifth catch for Warner. He had 41 on the season at 44 the previous four years combined. Illegal touching. Offense number 85 was covered up when he caught the ball. 
five yard penalty from the previous spot. Second down. Cade Warner, as they mentioned, covered up on the outside. Did not check over with the side judge and make sure he's properly lined up. Loss of down as well. Mistake there by Cade Warner. See if Alabama gets in the face and starts challenging Kansas State a little bit more. Will Howard doing such a good job of it. Just taking what Alabama's given him in the passing game. They got a stop at your play here. Don't know that it's in a timeout by either team because the officials are huddling and we have not been given a signal yet from Larry Smith, the referee. Social hour? All right, we're being told that they're just double checking to make sure that it's a loss of down on that penalty. Well, they should just ask you, Dave Pash. <laughs> Nobody knows the rule book as well as you. Our man, Matt Austin, back in studio helping us out here today. So it's going to be third and 11 on the Kansas State 45. K-State four of six on third down today. They led 10-0, but Alabama with a couple of quick touchdown passes by Bryce Young. Midway point of the second quarter. Alabama rushing four, backside pressure, but the pass away, underthrown. And they're going to say a catch by Sinnott at the 40. There's a penalty marker down, though. I think you might get a hold here on Kansas State. The Alabama was sideline was adamant too that it wasn't a catch. A lot of discussion going on here these last couple of Man, plays. This game has come to a screeching halt. Let's get it figured out here, guys. Does it complete a catch? Burn to play, personal foul. Defense number 94. So DJ Dale with the penalty. Now they have to make sure that it indeed was a catch by Sinnott. 15 yard catch and then 15 yards added on for the penalty. DJ Dale on the interior working over Cooper Beebe. See if we can get a look at it from this angle. Hand looked like it was up in that face mask pushing back. Boy that certainly looked live like it bounced but I don't know. Hard to tell if he got his hands underneath that ball or not. It was ruled a catch on the field. They're looking at it. We'll be back to New Orleans in a moment. The Allstate Sugar Bowl is brought to you by Taco Bell. Taco Bell is giving back to students all postseason long by giving them free tickets to the biggest bowl games of the year and Gatorade. Head to Gatorade.com for exclusives to help you fuel your 2023 goals. So much fun to be in New Orleans the last couple days, even with the bad weather, a lot of rain and thunderstorms. So they overturn the ruling on the field of a catch saying it's incomplete still a first down because of the penalty on Dale does look like it hits the ground and skips into his hands and man that hand to the face by DJ Dale so punitive that would have been Alabama off the field third and 11 now with the 15 yard penalty across midfield onto the 40 yard line the penalty that's another one right we just talked yeah. about it the, yeah. the penalties. Second penalty on Alabama today so first down for Kansas State on the Crimson Tide 40 Howard back to throw pressure in his face incomplete pass in between two defenders. He was not on the same page Howard with his wide receiver Malik Knowles. Good coverage there by Brian Branch anticipating that in cutting route in perfect position. 
Alabama defense feels like it's started to settle in. Will Anderson still been much of a non-factor here this first half. Surprising. A nice job by Kansas State limiting one of the best defenders in college football. In trouble. Howard goes down. Tackled for a loss at the 44 by Deontay Lawson who got the start today for the injured Jalen Moody. Boy they played this perfect. Watch Lawson just come down. Play the quarterback. Got somebody inside. Excellent job by Byron Young there with Deuce Vaughn. And then you had Deontay Lawson come downhill, anticipate if Will Howard wants to keep it in perfect position to make the play. There's Colin Klein, great player, 10 years ago was on that Big 12 title team. He's now the offensive coordinator. We'll see what he dials up here on third and 14. Pass underneath, caught by Warner, and fighting for the first down. He's going to be close. Might be shy by a half yard. We'll see if Klein and the head coach Kleiman decide to go for it here. It is fourth down and in inches. I think that they go for it. I think we see an aggressive Chris Kleiman here in this spot. Yeah, he was all, at the moment that ball was spotted. He's telling his offense, get on the line, we're going. Fascinating to see big personnel in. They got two tight ends in. Bring in Sammy Wheeler, bring in Ben Sennett. Going for it here. On fourth down and one, and it's a pass play caught by Knowles, a first down. Beautiful execution by Kansas State. Knowles lost his helmet. First down, Eli Ricks ripped the helmet off of Knowles, and he'll have to go to the sideline for a play. Colin Klein uses that motion, knows he's got man-to-man -man coverage. No way Kool-Aid McKintree can get to the flats in time. Easy pitch and catch. Nice call by Colin Klein and great execution by Will Howard and Malik Knowles. Fans saw Ricks rip the helmet off. They wanted a face mask call. First down on the 25. Play fake. Howard on the run. Flipping it downfield. Nobody home. Second and 10. Let's go to the studio and check in with Kevin Connors. All right, Dave, and points at a premium in the TransPerfect Music City Bowl is expected. Iowa, Kentucky, Xavier Wonkpaw is going to take this back 52 yards. Fifth defensive touchdowns this season by the Hawkeyes compared to six passing touchdowns. Dave, it's 14 0. So 5.40 left in the second quarter. Alabama leading Kansas State 14 10. Wildcats. With over 200 yards of total offense against this Bama defense, and here goes Deuce Vaughn trying to find a hole, spins around, and finally tackled by DeMarco Hellams. It is not easy to get Vaughn to the ground. No, it is not. See the balance he has after the missed tackle initially by Braswell, and a nice job by Hellams coming down to finish off the tackle. That's all pursuit, too, Dusty, because if you don't have that and you're not leveraging the football versus that guy, you better have people run into the football because he'll make the first guy miss. No question about that. Will Anderson's on the field. We've been seeing him a lot on third down, not as much on first and second down. Howard's had a good day so far throwing the ball on third down, but they're going to run it. DJ Giddens on third and eight, stacked up at the 18 yard line. Gain of five, fourth and three. Kansas State just went for it on fourth and one. We'll see if they go for it again. It would be about a 35-yard field goal try for Ty Zentner from here. I think that's why you call the run there. Clearly, they made the determination before, we're going for it, try to set this up in fourth and more manageable, and the offense stays on the field. That decision was made before that ball was snapped. A little surprised, though. Their field goal kicker hasn't missed this year. He's 10 for 10. Yeah. I think he thinks touchdowns are what they need to win this game against Bryce Young. Now that this offense has come alive. No Will Anderson on the field. Seven minute drive though if you don't get any points. Here's a pass over the middle. It's caught inside the 10. It's Ben Sennett again. And it's first in goal for the Wildcats from inside the five. Well Sennett working right there. Down block initially. Nobody identifies him in the middle of the field. And an excellent find from Will Howard to his favorite target. Ben Sennett. Dusty, you could argue that aside from Deuce Vaughn, he's the best offensive player they have. When we talk about development for K-State, he was a 205-pound walk-on when he came into the program. He's got real ball skills too, Tom. Yep. Former hockey player. Dad played high school football with Coach Common. The only reason he's had a chance to walk on was that relationship. 
Penalty marker down. Again, you got that heavy package in, a fullback and an extra offensive lineman for Kansas State. Ball start. Offense number 56. And, and that's the extra offensive lineman, Andrew Langang, who they bring in a lot in these short yardage situations. So unforced error there, and that'll push the ball back out near the nine yard line. Fifteenth play of the drive. It's it's an eight minute drive. And and that's the key. Keeping Bryce Young and that Bama offense over on the sidelines, chewing up and churning out this clock to close out this first half. Howard gives to Vaughn drilled in the backfield and dropped. Deontay Lawson, redshirt freshman from Mobile, Alabama, has two tackles for a loss in his fourth start of 2022. Excellent recognition downhill right now. And a quality job getting Deuce Vaughn onto the ground as the solo tackler. Not an easy feat for anybody. Well done by Deontay Lawson. First you got to find him, then you got to tackle him. So second down and goal from the 11 after the two yard loss. Empty backfield with Vaughn taking off. Howard has time. Fires complete to Warner. Bounces off of one tackler. Still fighting and down to the two yard line. Wow. Cade Warner, what a half. Five catches right around 50 yards. And now third and goal from about the two yard line. Kansas State in this bunch stack set. And just a shallow cross there from Cade Warner. Alabama doesn't identify him. And you see the toughness in fight from Cade Warner and Kansas State refusing to go down. And here comes that heavy package again with the extra offensive lineman, 56 there. Lane Gang, also the fullback, Christian Moore. He'll line up in front of Deuce Vaughn. Power against power on third down and goal. The pitch to Vaughn and knocked down inside the two. Boy, that is a train wreck at the line of scrimmage with all those big bodies and D.J. Dale with the tackle. Heavy personnel. you got extra offensive linemen, fullback, and Christian Moore, a little power toss. Alabama answers the bell. They've gone for on fourth down twice. I don't expect anything different here on fourth down from the two. This is a 10-minute drive right now. This is play 18 for Kansas State. Would fourth be. and goal from the two. I look for 34 Senate if I'm Alabama. Play action very much alive here. Play fake, Howard throws, incomplete. Defender for Alabama, Will Anderson fell down. Sinnott was open with a pass was off the mark and K-State turns it over on down. And it's the play action and Sinnott's able to get out in the flats. He gets outside the defender, Will Anderson falls to the ground and just a missed opportunity by Will Howard. What a drive, but it nets nothing here in New Orleans. Welcome back to the 89th All-State Sugar Bowl. Dave Pash, Dusty DeVore, check Tom Luganville down on the field. Time of possession dominated by Kansas State. They had that last drive, 10 and a half minutes. They had the ball, 18 plays, but they couldn't come up with any points. They went for it on fourth down three times, converted the first two, but not the last. And so Alabama takes over from its own two-yard line. And here's Gibbs. Drags a defender, cheat him out to the four for a couple yards. We'll see if Kansas State use a timeout, and it will. So two remaining for the Wildcats. Mercedes-Benz halftime report is coming up. Breakdown of the first half and a look ahead to the college football playoff semifinals. Verbo Fiesta Bowl up first, Michigan TCU. Bryce Young after a slow start, including a pass that probably should have been a touchdown, just under through a wide open Jermaine Burton, but he's been hot. Six of seven, a couple of touchdowns. Second and eight from the Bama four. Two timeouts remaining for Kansas State. They'll run it again with Gibbs, jump cut, trying to get the corner, he does, pass the 15. Stiff arming and out of bounds at the 26 yard line. A gain of 22 for the Georgia Tech transfer. I'll tell you, this is an excellent block by three. Jermaine Burton comes across in motion, seals that edge. And you see the speed from Jameer Gibbs. 
to get a nice pickup now gives them breathing room. Now you can put your pedal, your foot on the gas, and take some shots down the field. You got timeouts and Bryce Young running the show with 47 seconds to play. Deuce Vaughn was first team All-America, all-purpose. Jameer Gibbs was second team All-America, all-purpose. Young to throw. To the sideline, it's high and incomplete. Going for Brooks, so the clock stops with 43 seconds remaining here in the first half. We just missed Ja'Cory Brooks there. Pass sails on him high. He's got Brooks, that corner route open, and that soft spot in front of the, the corners. Just a misfire by Bryce Young. Everything just completely shifts when you give yourself some breathing room after that chunk run from Jameer Gibbs. So be play 25 for Alabama today. Kansas State has run 39 plays. Bama's going to keep it on the ground. McClellan with a head of steam. He gets leveled at the 39-yard line, but the defender that made the tackle, Omar Daniels, got the worst of it. He's down, and so... A timeout with 37 seconds remaining here in the half. Great bounce back, as we mentioned, by Bryce Young after a slow start. Yeah, Bryce Young came out of the blocks really slow, but his ability to navigate within the pocket. Pressure's coming up from the looper, but he steps up, takes the contact, finds the underneath route from Jameer Gibbs, and a big explosive play. That was a third and 10, down 10-0. And then again, just a poise in the pocket, bouncing around. Points to his freshman wide receiver, finds him on the back line, and got Alabama right back in this ballgame. And we touched on this a little bit earlier with the two touchdowns tying A.J. McCarron, who was a three-year starter, Young a two-year starter, to a tongue of Iloa with the 87 touchdown pass as the all-time leader at Alabama. How do you think the Crimson Tide will handle here the final 37 seconds? They're at the 38-yard line right now with their timeouts. They could be aggressive. Look, and they've had a couple of chunk runs, but... Look, set up maybe a little play action. Get Bryce Young there at quarterback. I think they're going to take a couple of opportunities, at least try to get themselves in field goal range. And it's amazing. Kansas State's being aggressive. They've got them backed up inside the five, but you get a nice run, and all of a sudden now it's Alabama who becomes the aggressor. So I, I think we're going to see Bill O'Brien pedal to the metal and trust the quarterback that he told us was brilliant and magical. You got a guy that's brilliant and magical, Dave, you give him the football and let him work. Think of a lot of great quarterbacks that uh, Bill O'Brien has had over the years, whether it was Tom Brady in New England or you know, Deshaun Watson when he was a head coach with the Texans. Here's Young on first down. Downfield throw. Got a man there, and it's caught. It's Jermaine Burton again, and what a throw. Dropped it into the bucket inside the 40 at the 36-yard line. What a throw. Wow. Absolute dime. Can't throw it any better. Burton's foot's in. That's a catch as well thrown a football as you could have in that spot. Burton gets a step, and Bryce Young makes him pay. 26 yards. They get the ball to start the second half as well. Young over the middle to Latu. He's down inside the 15. Clock will stop to reset the chains, and they still have those two timeouts. 25 seconds left in the half. That's a size mismatch. You've got a six foot five Law 2 matched up on a 5'10". Drake Cheatham, ball put out in front. Good, strong hands by Law 2 to pull it in and get yards after the catch. A little surprised they didn't use one of those timeouts. Now they're taking a ton of time off the clock. They snap it with 15 seconds. Young to the end zone, and they haven't signaled yet. Now they do. Touchdown. Burton took it away from Echo Boydo. And the Crimson Tide extend the lead to 20 to 10. Well, you asked me on camera, what do you do? You put the ball in nine's hands. Man-to-man -man coverage outside. Love the inside release from Burton. That ball perfectly placed. Boydo unable to get his hand on the football. An excellent job there by Jermaine Burton to bring in that catch in the end zone. How about that? Less than a minute they go, literally, the length of the field. And now you certainly understand why Chris Kleiman went for it in fourth and goal. Bama goes down the field and scores, and they get the ball to start the second half. Take a look at Jermaine Burton working outside. He knows he's got man-to-man -man coverage. Just going to be a nice dig. Excellent timing. I love the inside release. He works his way inside. He knows he's got the leverage, and the ball placed perfectly from Bryce Young. That throw to Jermaine Burton over on the sidelines. 
Wow. Good, good as it gets, man. Uh, good as it gets. That's why people are talking about him regardless of whether you're worried about his size at the next level because he makes throws like that. He's one of the most talented players to come into college football at that position in a long time. Greg and Julie, Bryce's parents here from Pasadena. That's 30 touchdown passes on the season for Young. He had almost 5,000 yards in winning the Heisman a year ago. You know it's amazing too? Because he's small. He's not a big guy. He's probably 5'11", 185, 190 pounds. But he's got such good feel, he never takes big shots. And he's oh. never hurt. Exactly. Scooped up by Phillip Brooks. And Brooks will not even make it to the 20. In meeting with Bryce Young yesterday, we, we asked him about, you know, is he prepared for all the nitpicking that's going to happen over the next few months? He said, and a lot of guys say it, and, you know, you just kind of say, all right, he's giving the corporate line, but he really meant it. Like, the time we spent with him, you could sense the sincerity. He's like, guys, I, I want to win this game. I'm playing in this game because I want to win. I love my teammates. And I want to go out on a high note. We, we didn't win, we didn't reach our goal. We didn't win a championship. I want to finish strong. This is likely my last game, but I'm not even thinking about what's next. That's exactly right. He said, my teammates have my back. I'm going to have my teammates back. You try to bait him with that question. He wasn't having it. He said, we're focused on Kansas State on winning this Sugar Bowl. Under Nick Saban at halftime with the lead. Bama's 170 and nine. They laid 21-10. We'll send it to Reese, David, and Desmond for the Mercedes-Benz Halftime Report right after these messages. This Halftime Report is presented by Mercedes-Benz. For 30 years, the All-State AFCA Good Works team has recognized college football players whose good works extend beyond the field of play. This year's team looks to continue that tradition of leadership and volunteerism. All State is proudly teamed up with the American Football Coaches Association to celebrate 31 years of service with the All State AFCA Good Works team. Tonight, we congratulate 22 student athletes and the honorary head coach for their dedication toward making a positive impact off the field. Welcome back to the All-State Sugar Bowl, the 17th appearance for the Alabama Crimson Tide, the first for the Kansas State Wildcats, and the fifth-ranked Tide leading number nine K-State, 21-10. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, and Tom Luganbill. It was 10-0 Kansas State, so 21 unanswered points by Alabama. Bryce Young got hot, and then in the final minutes, a 14-point swing. Everything seemed to change, and Kansas State was being aggressive. They already converted on two fourth downs, but a crucial fourth down play action, move the pocket, try to find your tight end, send it, and he, Will Howard just misses, and Alabama turns around, goes 98 yards, Bryce Young, was outstanding, locating Jermaine Burton, Latu, and capping it off with a Jermaine Burton touchdown over the middle. And it feels like the game completely shifted. It seemed like Kansas State might go in with a lead at half, now down 11. And that Kansas State drive, over 10 minutes at eight up, the longest Kansas State drive that didn't yield points since 2012. How do they respond to come back? out of the locker room after the end of that half. Going to be fascinating to see the mindset of the Wildcats to start the second. It's like that 88-yard touchdown run by Deuce Vaughn woke up Alabama yeah. because Bryce Young at that point was 1 of 4. He finishes 10 of 15 for over 200 yards and three touchdowns. And Alabama will get the ball to start the second half. Since Nick Saban took over, this is year 16, when they've had a lead of double figures at halftime, they've lost twice. Oh. 137 and two. It's pretty good. Unbelievable. Not bad. A good success rate. It's Wildcat defense. Classic. And an onside kick attempt to start the second half, and it's recovered by Roy Dell Williams of Alabama. So Chris Kleiman tries to catch Alabama off guard. It doesn't work, and now the Tide have the ball in plus territory. Well, clearly Chris Kleiman saying we got to find a way to create expert possessions. And a nice job by the backup running back, Roy Dell Williams, not abandoning, staying right there, identifying the onside kick, getting on top of it. And now Bryce Young in Alabama, right out of half with a short field. With Chris Kleiman 
I mean, think about how aggressive he was. Go for it, going for it three times before the half on fourth down, and now an onside kick. He knows, Dave, he's got to have points if they're going to have any chance of beating Alabama. Comes up snake eyes going into the half and coming out. Play fake for Young on first down. Hits his tight end lot two and out of bounds around the 41 for a gain of five. Let's check in with Tom. Well, Dusty, you're exactly right. That's exactly what Chris Kleiman is thinking at Kansas State. They're going to continue to be aggressive. I think he had a number in his head. Whether that's 30 points, 35 points, they have to score points. They've got to stay aggressive. Now, for Nick Saban, he felt like they were out of sync in the first quarter because they were just calling plays to call plays. So we got to package our plays better. They did that better in the second half. And in the, in the second quarter, they got to get off the field on defense on third down. Here's Gibbs getting a first down to the 31 yard line. A gain of nine. Kansas State has only given up 33 points in the second half the last six games. See if that defense can step up again. But after failing to get the onside kick, Alabama's already at the 32 yard line. We're stout against the run in the first half. Nice job on the right side by Ekior and Latham, creating a nice hole for Jameer Gibbs. Got McClellan in now at running back. Young going deep. Into the end zone. Oh, what a throw on the money to Brooks for the touchdown. Bryce Young with his fourth touchdown pass. Incredible. Wow. Sensational throw. Play action pass. Move the pocket ever so slightly. The deep over for Ja'Cory Brooks. Look, Julius Prince is 6'4". There's only one place you can throw that football. And Bryce Young having himself an afternoon here in the Sugar Bowl. Wow, four what a throw. Four touchdown passes to four different receivers. And it's 28 to 10, 28 straight points since that Deuce Vaughn 88 yard run. Bryce Young, Heisman Trophy winner last year. Numbers not as gaudy in 2022, but he played just as well. Phenomenal showing by Young in the Tide. This game track brought to you by Princess Cruises. 108 rushing yards, 88 on the one play. He's been shut down since. Talking about Deuce Vaughn. Bryce Young, almost as many touchdowns as incompletions. And again, three incompletions in his first four passes. He was off. Remember the two shots down the field, the burden that he missed on? That feels like a thing of the past based off of the throws that he's made here in the second quarter. And as good a throw as you'll see anywhere to start the second half. Kansas State now in trouble. The Wildcats down 18. Got to pick the ball up. That's a free ball. Brooks does, and he doesn't even make it to the 15-yard line. Dumped by Christian Story and others. Oh, it's such a well-thrown football. We'll show it to you one more time. He's got plenty of time to deliver. He just throws it to a spot and allows Ja'Cory Brooks to get underneath it. Tom, that's as well done as it could possibly be. It really is. And, you know, when we came on air, we talked to the difference of, of, of accuracy and ball placement. Of course he's accurate. But when you're thrown to a spot and you're placing the ball in the only place it can possibly be to have a chance, that's where Bryce Young thrives. Let's see how Will Howard responds. Howard helped. Kansas State to a Big 12 championship. Ball hits the ground. It's picked up by Vaughn. He does well to get past the line of scrimmage and actually get positive yardage before he's tackled by To'o To'o. Almost a disaster there on the first play for Kansas State from scrimmage in the second half. We saw kind of a mishandling of that kickoff. Now that Kansas State just got to settle down, take a deep breath, and put together a drive to counter what Alabama's thrown at them at the end of the first half and here to start the second. They bring Cade Warner in motion. Play action. And the pass is incomplete. Going for Senate. Gets drilled. Plus Will Anderson had some pressure. So it'll bring up third down. Will Anderson with that long wingspan. Nice job on the play action. Moving the pocket. Getting up the field. Forcing the errant throw from Will Howard. How about Will Anderson yesterday? We asked him, why are you playing in this game? He said, I didn't want to be a hypocrite. I've been the team leader telling guys to play hard every snap. 
I wanted one last game with my teammates. As impressive a young man as I've been around covering college football. He's awesome. Here he comes off the edge, getting in the face of the quarterback, and it's intercepted. Branch steps in front and gets the pick. Anderson started it. Branch finishes it. Alabama with another takeaway. Well, this Alabama defense has really come to life as we take a look at Branch working over the slot receiver. Watch the feel he plays with here. Excellent job just sitting down to freeze it. Look at that vision. He feels it, he sees it, comes off his route, undercuts the outside receiver, gets an outstanding interception. We've seen Branch around the line of scrimmage as a blitzer, a tackler, and you see the feel and instincts there in zone coverage. Excellent job from Brian Branch. The worst possible start you could have for Kansas State. Alabama's two possessions, both starting in plus territory. McClellan inside the 10, heading for the end zone, touchdown. Did the Tide just put the Cats away? It's 34 to 10. Well, there's a true freshman, Tyler Booker, who's starting at left guard. Watch the movement he gets up front, paving this path for McClellan. Just going to come down on a down block, and a big gaping hole opens up. Really well done. That's a 332-pound true freshman. And Bill O'Brien said he's got a future as a first-round pick if he continues to progress. And you can see why the power opening the hole on the McClellan touchdown. In two years, Dusty. He is going to be the offensive version of Will Anderson as a kid and as a person. 21 points in the last two minutes and four seconds of game time. And a penalty marker down on the made point after. Two possessions to start the second half, both beginning in Kansas State territory, both touchdowns. Alabama has grabbed control of this game, leading by 25. The Allstate Sugar Bowl is brought to you by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. Capital One, what's in your wallet? And Taco Bell. Taco Bell is giving back to students all postseason long by giving them free tickets to the biggest bowl games of the year. The 79 and 93 Allstate Sugar Bowl wins national championship victories for Alabama. Who will win it this year? Will Georgia become the first team to repeat since Alabama 2011 2012? That's the night of the Chick fil A Peach Bowl. Georgia, Ohio State. First, it's the Verbo Fiesta Bowl, Michigan, and TCU. And that's coming up next right here on ESPN. You know what's interesting about those games? As much as football has changed, they've stayed the same. It's still a line of scrimmage game. And the one and two seeds, Georgia, Michigan, they have the best, most physical offensive lines in college football this season. And I'm intrigued from the TCU side and from the Ohio State side. Can they match that along the line of scrimmage here this afternoon? It's going to be fun to watch. Last time we saw Ohio State, they're getting blown out against Michigan. Did not play, obviously, in the Big Ten championship game. AT&T countdown to the CFP National Championship. We talked about Georgia trying to be the first team to repeat in a decade. Michigan in it last year. So two straight appearances in the college football playoff for Jim Harbaugh's team. First ever for TCU. Ohio State won the championship back in 2014. Well, Sonny Dykes has done an amazing job in year one. Garrett Riley, that offense has been electric. Talk about Max Duggan is reshaping his career. Started the year as a backup. Been a great story all year. And here's Vaughn in trouble in the backfield. Branch tracks him down. What a game for Brian Branch. Lawson was back there first, but Branch with his third tackle for a loss on the day. Well, it starts with Lawson. We'll see him come down, and then we're going to get Branch out of your screen. Flying downhill, attacking, aggressive, setting edges for this Alabama defense. Nowhere for Deuce Vaughn to go. Oh, man. I'd hate to see that. It's Vaughn that's shaken up. He, he was trying to come to the sideline. He went to the ground. Now he's hobbling, getting a little help to the sideline. It's likely his last game. There's been a lot of talk that he'll be a third or fourth round NFL draft pick, and coming back probably doesn't help 
his draft status. So a lot of people thinking this is it for him here at Kansas State. And his dad, longtime assistant coach, now a scout for the Dallas Cowboys, going to be able to help him make the right decision. And Coach Kleiman said for him, some other guys on the team, they'll have that discussion here after this game. So Giddens is in. He had a good year as he's out past the 25 to the 26 branch with another big hit. Giddens had almost 500 yards. It's number three in school history for rushing yards by a freshman. He does have six touchdowns, three in the last four games. So the redshirt freshman, very capable. But at this point, it's really about the quarterback and the passing game, right? I mean, how many more possessions are you going to get down 25? And Will Howard was so masterful down the stretch of the season. But today under pressure, he's really struggled. Just two for eight with two picks under pressure. We'll see if they can give him some time here on third down. Got to have it down here for Kansas State. In trouble. Dumps it off to Giddens. And Alabama just too much speed. Tracked down again by Brian Branch. And you mentioned this, Dusty, in the first half. Pete Golding, the deep coordinator, saying, that, that Branch was their best football player. And you touched on that in the first half. We kind of looked at each other like, wow, are you talking about two guys that might go one, two in the draft? And you're pointing out Branch, who, by the way, was a second team All America. He's outstanding. And he's just gotten better and better. And when you watch this defense, he jumps off the tape. His coverability, his tackling ability, and it's been all on display here this afternoon. Zentner on to punt. McKinstry signaling for the fair catch gets out of the way and this will work out well for Kansas State the first thing in a long time that has worked out well for the Wildcats. Brian Branch been the best player on the field on defense today for Alabama. His Capital One rewarding performance four touchdown passes for Bryce Young second most in Sugar Bowl history Justin Fields had six two years ago. He's been everything as advertised. Special special afternoon after the slow start for Bryce Young just putting balls in places that not many people on this planet can do. That's why if I'm if the Houston Texans have the top pick. I can't imagine not taking number nine. A lot of running room for Gibbs. Out to the 24 for six. Payne on the stop. Alabama, uh, Alabama bowl record is five touchdown passes, and that was in the college football playoff championship against Ohio State. That's Young the year was, that he was a true freshman, and he told us he learned a lot from that. Sitting there that year learning got in late didn't have spring practice because of COVID and really helped his growth early on watching Matt Jones get it done. Gibbs comes up just short or are they going to give it to him it's really close let's see it's going to be third down third and about one. Dusty the thing that's so interesting to me about Bryce Young is if you watch him practice or you see him in shirts and shorts there's not going to be anything that's going to wow you about him. Turn that's on the tape that's all you got to do Tom. Exactly it's unbelievable what a different player he becomes. Look at the last three drives third and one big stop that time as McClellan is wrapped up by Cheatham playing with that broken hand now it's fourth down. If you're Alabama you got a 25 point lead do you punt. You're inside your 30. Nick Saban, you would think, based on just who he is, would punt the ball, being a defensive minded coach, but they're, they're keeping the, the offense on. Oh, they're, they're giving him the first down. Okay. Boy, I thought he was short. It looked like it by the initial spot, the far guy running in, but a little bit overruled there on that. They, they may take a look at this. They should. It looked like he was short, the first down yardage. We had a top, uh, we had a review from above. Let's put the ball short of the line again by half a yard. Be... So there you go, fourth down. So again, Nick Saban. A lot of coaches go for it. Yeah. <laughs> inside, even inside their 30 these days, I just have a hard time seeing Nick Saban do that, <laughs> and that's why he just. Well, I don't Let's know. See. He might be going for the jugular. Right. I mean, if you get the first down point. and then you get more points, the game's over. But I don't know. I just. Definitely looks short of the line to gain. They they're, got this right. They're going to punt. That's okay. 
Hey, I don't know exactly how that just worked, but can we get more of what we just saw? They made the wrong spot initially. The head referee said we got a different spot from above. How quick that was, was to great. review it and say that it was wrong? Maybe in the first half we had a couple that uh, curiously took too long. Maybe that's why that one was a little bit quicker. Here's the punt to Brooks. Moving forward, fields it. Oh, gets face planted by Law. Around the 35 yard line. So coming up next, Michigan TCU. Then you got. Georgia Ohio State tonight in the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential Monday leading into a huge game in the AFC with Buffalo and Cincinnati along with Kansas City fighting for the top spot. Great week of football. Let's get an update as you look at Deuce Vaughn who came out earlier obviously not out there right now with the offense Tom what do you got. Looks like he's going to be though comes out of the tent they're retaping his right angle and he got rolled up on the opposite sideline on that last drive, but he looks like he's rip roaring and ready to go. Big completion there for Howard. If nothing else, to try to get him some confidence back. Brooks with a catch and a first down. Kansas State got the stop. Now can they put together their first good offensive drive since the first quarter? When by the way, they led 10 to nothing. Like to play action, backers get sucked up. They're really aggressive. Middle of the field's open, and a nice completion to move the sticks. Maybe give Will Howard some confidence. Howard in trouble, being chased, gets rid of it, and Knowles can't make the catch. Backside pressure from Jamarian Latham. You watch these guys up front defensively for Alabama. They don't seem to have the same big names that you're used to seeing on that front. But and they the do inside, some young talent. On the inside. And the inside, they don't have the defensive tackle, just upper echelon elite players that they've had previously on the edges with Will Anderson, oh, yeah. Dallas Turner, a little different. But you're right. They do have big man Jaheim Otis. 91 can get a roller. Giddens trying to stretch out, wrapped up by Chris Braswell. No question. You look at Braswell and Anderson. Lawson yeah. has played well today, but... You got young guys up there too. Byron Young's been a really good player. Yeah. Solid player. Absolutely. In, in that three man front for Alabama. Back to throw. Howard stepping up. Launching a complete. Giddens inside the 30. And Giddens down to the 15 yard line. Been a long time since Kansas State has had a big play. That's a 36 yard game. Well, I love Will Howard's pocket presence. Watch him climb. And he waits right until Giddens clears the linebacker. Perfectly placed football. For some nice yards after the catch. Big third down conversion for Will Howard, this Wildcat offense. And you see there Deuce Vaughn in the game. So penalty on Alabama. Added to the end of the run down to the 15 yard line. Dusty Dave, you guys were mentioning the interior of that front. You mentioned Jaheim Otis, Dusty. True freshman came in last January at 418 pounds, got down to 348. He's going to be their next great one on the inside. Power to the air on first down, and it's batted down, and it was Otis that got a hand on it. And right on cue, Jaheim Otis, he is the future. Watch him just walk the center, Hayden Gillum, right back in the quarterback's lap, and he gets his hands up and knocks the pass down. You referenced it, Tom, from 418 all the way down to 338. They think he's got a chance to be something special on the inside this Alabama defensive line. They've been recruiting him since he was in the eighth grade. Movement by Hanser, the right guard for Kansas State. Cross start. Offense, number 54. We mentioned Oates. They were recruiting him when he was about 13 years old, hoping if they could get him in their system with the great strength and conditioning staff they have here, work with him, help him to lose the weight, take advantage of his size, and turn him into an athlete. So second and 15 after the penalty. Midway point of the third. Kansas State really in must touchdown territory now. An errant snap that time. Good job to collect it. Howard giving it to Vaughn, who's back to the original line of scrimmage. 
That's the 18th carry of the day for Vaughn. Malachi Moore was there defensively. He had the big 88 yard, is 88 and out the gate early, but really this Alabama front has done an excellent job since them bottling him up, tackling well against one of the more elusive ball carriers in all of college football, and he doesn't have a single catch. I think that's the bigger part. They were worried about him in the throw game. Zero catches here so far for Deuce Vaughn. And just one target. And that was on the interception. Will Anderson with great get off that time. I, I was sure that Anderson was offside. There is a flag yeah. down in the secondary. It's got to be an Anderson. I, he's quick. I don't know if he's that quick though. Offside. Defense number 31. Five yard penalty. It was interesting. We were talking with Anderson yesterday about, you know, who he, he studies a ton of film. Nick Bosa, Khalil Mack, Von Miller, Max Crosby. Those are just some of the guys that he looks up to and studies film on. I see some Von Miller, maybe more Khalil Mack with his heavy hands and his ability against the run. Turned himself into a really nice pass rusher. and make himself a lot of money and play for a long time at the next level. Here's a fade. Knowles can't come up with it. McKinstry knocks it away. No flag down. And Kansas State will have to go for it on fourth and five. But Kool-Aid McKinstry did a really good job with that left hand breaking that pass up. Hand fighting both sides there. Gets his left hand in. It's an excellent job by one of the premier corners college football. I think there's too much. No, Contact? I just don't understand this here. Why are yeah. you going for the field goal when you, you went for it on fourth down at the end of the first half? You try the onside kick to start the second half. Why, why now are you going for three points? I think that's very fair. Try to cut it to three scores. So it's 35 to 13. Midway point of the third. And welcome back to the All-State Sugar Bowl at Caesars Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, Tom Lugan built down on the field. It's 35-13 Alabama, and Kansas State led 10-0, so they finally get their first point since the opening quarter. Alabama scored touchdowns on five consecutive possessions, four touchdown passes for Bryce Young, and just five incompletions on the day. I think it was a fair question you asked before the break. Why after so much aggressiveness, now you'd be conservative and kick the field goal? I think Chris Kleinman said, you know what? We need something good to happen. We need something positive. We've got to try to change this momentum and get some points on the board. I think that's why we saw him elect to kick the field goal. And you cut it from a four score game to a three score game. Gibbs will let that one go. It'll be a touchback come out to the 25. Well, Bryce Young, he has been sensational in moments so far here today. It's been the ball placement that we've talked about, throwing to spots that only his wide receivers can make a play on the football. Before the half to Burton, just an absolute dime. And here to start the second half, this throw to Brooks, I mean, it's as good as it gets. Bryce Young showing off the goods here in the Big Easy the Alabama offense. Kansas State has a little life. Let's see how the defense responds. Play action for Young. And over the middle, what a play. Latu is loose after breaking a tackle near midfield. Bryce Young continues to wow. He does, and he throws open his wide receiver. Cheatham's got pretty good coverage on him. He's got Mott right in his face, and he knows throw it inside. Allow my 6'5 tight end to run with the ball after the catch. Here's Gibbs getting the carry. We talked a lot about the different traits. His best might be his preparation. We mentioned this in the first half. If you're just joining us and didn't hear the story, it really stood out to us. And talking with offensive coordinator about uh, Bill O'Brien, who's coached a lot of good quarterbacks over the years, he said, on Tuesday, when we meet with the players for the first time, I have to have clips ready to go to show Bryce Young, who by Tuesday will have watched every single game already for the upcoming opponent and have his own clips ready to go. He'll know a lot of the terminology as well. 
On second and eight, Young stepping away from pressure. He's so good at that. Flag down might be holding, and Young throws it away. Excellent rush there by Felix and Yudike Uzama. I think you will get a hold. Talked about him from the There's outset. There's no foul for additional grounding. Number two was in the area. During the play, holding offense, number 52. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Second down. And 91, we haven't called his name much here today, but he's going to have a real decision to make as well, working on 54, Tyler Steen. Nice job with the hands. Rip move as he gets taken down by Steen, but he's got a chance to be a late first round, second round pick. Still raw as a pass rusher, but he's got great length, explosiveness, and outstanding for this Kansas State defense. Only Power 5 team to offer him a scholarship was Kansas State. Tulsa and Northern Iowa were the others coming out of Kansas City. Second and 18. Young from the pocket. Pressure again, so Young stepping up and running and sliding at the 45, so it's a five-yard gain. So back-to-back -back pressures by NUDK Uzama. Well, Steen got away with the hold there. It should have been back-to-back -back holds. Previous play, you had Uzama beat him with speed. Now he came back inside with a counter. Steen got lucky with a the grab there inside. Help as Uzama flushing Bryce Young out of the pocket. How about he gained almost 50 pounds since high school? Yeah. 50. <laughs> He was about 200 pounds when he got to Kansas State. He's listed now at 255. He's still learning too, Dave. He's still raw as a pass rusher. Plays with good leverage and explosiveness. We'll see if he can impact third down. Third and 13, they bring everybody. Young from the pocket. Is sacked back at the 41 by T.J. Payne. Excuse me, V.J. Payne, the true freshman, was third stringer, but because of injuries, has become the starter at that position. Well, we're just going to sell out. We're going to bring a little bit of everybody here and force the hand of Bryce Young. But ultimately, it's V.J. Payne. You see the loop and wrap from Daniel Green forces Bryce Young up in the pocket, and the true freshman Payne gets him to the ground. Nice job by this Wildcat defense. It's been a while since they've gotten a stop. Got to be a confidence builder for Joe Klanderman's squad. And if you think about the history of Kansas State, a lot of times... When they win big games, they get a punt return for a touchdown. Something crazy happens. Not going to happen here because of the hang time, forcing the fair catch at the 20. But Kansas State not done. Can they get a touchdown and get within two scores going into the fourth quarter? The NBA is back on ESPN Wednesday with the Milwaukee Bucks taking on Toronto to start the night. And the Lakers and Miami in the nightcap. How about LeBron James? Just came short of 50 points last night on his 38th birthday. Wow. Sensational. How about the other night? You had Luca going for 60 and 21. He has been sensational this season as well. Got the Pelicans across the street. They are currently leading the Western Conference. They need Vaughn to get going. He gets out to about the 28. Boy, what burst he has, man. He hits the hole. He is going 100 miles an hour. He gets about six or seven yards on first down. It's the acceleration. He sees that hole. He hits it downhill. He's obviously got the elusiveness, the shake. He gets the pitch here and has a first down out to the 33. You touched on his dad, Christopher. Deuce's birth name is Christopher. Christopher the second. And oh, the Deuce. Deuce. Yeah. Oh, look at you. It's that Syracuse degree coming up big yes. when you need it most as we got uh, an injury here. DeMarco Hellams, either injury or just lost his helmet, got to come out for a play. And do you think that maybe is why he wears 22 as well? Could be. The double deuce. You guys are pure mathematicians up there. Well, he's in the slot up top. He's a great route runner. Pressure off the edge, though. In trouble is Howard and gets rid of the ball as he's being dragged down. Was his knee down? I think his knee was down before he threw the football. Yep, it was. It's a sack back at the 23-yard line. That's a huge play. It's a loss of 10. When Malachi Moore, like he was shot out of a cannon off the edge. Knee down, ball still in his hand. Will Howard trying to do his best to get outside the pocket and get rid of the football. Moore on him too quickly. So now second down and 20. 
Here's Vaughn getting another touch. And out to the 27 for a gain of four. A third down and long. We'll see what Kansas State can get here. If you get on third and 16, nine or ten yards, maybe you're going for it at this point. I don't know. Outside two minutes to go in the third. Down 22. I think it depends on what you pick up here. If it's fourth and manageable, I think it's in play. But if you don't pick up in the yard, it's tough to go for it in this area from fourth and Oh, yeah. No question. 16. Right. Yep. He'd be punting at that point. Let's see what they can get here on third down. Will Anderson. Cheetah package in. Howard with time. Floats it downfield. And it's oh incomplete. Sinnott dropped it. That was a great throw by Will Howard. It would have been a first down, and it would have been a gain of about 25. They told us Sinnott, some of the best ball skills on the team, matched up on To'o To'o. It's out and up, and he's got him. Ball perfectly placed, and the sure-handed tight end can't bring it in. That's a well-thrown ball from Will Howard. A little shove from To'o To'o. Maybe that helped jar the ball free, but... That was a play Kansas State absolutely needed to have. Now punting it back to Alabama. Short punt, and it checks up. Going to be about a 24-yard punt. So Alabama will be near midfield. Their first two drives of this half started in Kansas State territory, and now another one awfully close on the Alabama 49. And if you're just joining us, Chris Kleiman, very aggressive, went for it. Around a minute left to close out the second quarter, fourth and goal from the two. They don't get it. Bama goes down and scores, and they open the second half with an onside kick. I don't think you said this on the air. I think you said it off the air when we were talking about how Kansas State won the Big 12 championship yeah. with a goal line stand, yeah. and then maybe it's the lack of a play on the goal line here that loses them the All-State Sugar Bowl. Young waiting, finding Latu. And Green trying to rip it free. They finally blow it dead after a gain of four. I just mentioned that's why you're such a great teammate. You helped make a great point for me. I didn't say on the air, but you make sure it gets on the air. So look at you. Ultimate point guard. Either Either that or young. Just horrible memory that I couldn't remember whether you said it on the air or off. <laughs> eh, you know, I did a little bit of both. <laughs> I've taken several shots of the head too. <laughs> I don't know if I said it on or off either. Here is McClellan. And, and Nick Saban did he took a shot at you yesterday for uh, what do you say? No talent as a D lineman. He, he claimed that he was a great quarterback, and he was saying as a, as a, as a nose tackle you, that he was the one that had the skill, and you did. He said there was three levels of player, and at the very bottom, no talent's the nose guard. So not only did he beat me in a national championship game on this field 19 <laughs> years ago in LSU, then he had to rip me when we sit there in the game meeting. He said it was skill, no skill, and no talent. Yeah. <laughs> that was Thanks, Nick, Coach. Nick Saban's first national championship against Dusty Dvorak and the Oklahoma Sooners 19 years ago when he was a head coach of the LSU Tigers. Young on third and six, and it's a strike for a first down. Prentice breaks tackles inside the 20. Prentice inside the 10 to the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Fifth touchdown pass for Bryce Young. I'll tell you what, Tom, you were talking about some of these young, true freshman wide receivers. We've seen Isaiah Bond, and we were talking with the staff. You were quick to say, what about Kobe Prentice? I now see exactly what you were talking about. What an outstanding job after the catch. Thanks, man. Yeah, I think they've got three really young, good-looking receivers. Kendrick Law being the other one. The future's bright on the perimeter for Alabama. Think about it. Bryce Young started the game one for four. He's now 15 of 20 for 321 yards, five touchdowns to five different receivers. No interceptions, and Alabama goes to the fourth quarter, leading 42 to 13.
Welcome back to the All-State Sugar Bowl for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Playing in this game for a record 17th time, have a 42-13 lead over Kansas State. K-State led 10-0. It's been all Bama since. Bryce Young, his fifth career game with five passing touchdowns. That's an Alabama record. He's got 32 touchdown passes on the season. And he's now second all-time at Alabama, only trailing Tua for the most touchdown passes in Tide history. Here's Phillip Brooks on the return. And pushed out of bounds short of the 25-yard line. Take a look at that touchdown. They're going to get a bunch set. You'll see Kobe Prentice here, and he's just going to work up and in. And this, this trio is going to sort this out. And it's going to be Josh Hayes who's got the coverage on the dig. He's too soft. That ball delivered perfectly. Hayes misses the first tackle. And then it's the true freshman, V.J. Payne, who misses the second. Safety's got to get him to the ground and the speed in the open field. And Bryce Young loving what he's seeing from his wide receiver core here today. Well, they've been trying to find that next great receiver. They've had so many first-round picks the last handful of years for Alabama. And when you have Bryce Young, I'm not sure it matters the way he spreads the ball around. Here's a deep ball from Howard, and he overshoots Phillip Brooks. You know, Jamison Williams, who obviously was hurt, then he had Waddlin, Devontae Smith, Jerry Judy. So you've had a, since 2018, six guys drafted in the first round from Alabama with multiple quarterbacks. That's a decent run, I guess. <laughs> that's, that's remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. 1780, Kobe Prentice, Isaiah Bond, names to remember as young, talented receivers for the Tide. Like a lot of us, they're definitely investing in Bond here going forward. Flag down. Vaughn tackled at the 30. I'm here all week. Thought you were going to say Bond. <laughs> Isaiah on, Bond. Man. You forgot the During stock the run, market. Holding offense number 54. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Second down. It's on Panzer second penalty. Boy, it looked like Kansas State was getting a little momentum back, but misfire, or misconnection, I should say, between Howard and Sinnott, and then Alabama scores immediately, and it's out of hand again, 42-13. Howard on second and 20, and the pass just off the mark intended for Vaughn. It's a little quick on that delivery. Deuce Vaughn not all the way at the top of his route, ready for the football, and struggles continue for the Wildcat offense. Check in with Tom. Yeah, guys, you know, I, I understand Alabama fans' frustration when they don't make the college football playoff, but when you look at what they're continuing to accomplish in recruiting, look at their 2023 class. 28 verbal commitments ended up signing and 14 of them are at the top five at their position nationally, including the top one and two running backs, fourth and fifth quarterback, your top edge rusher. It is littered with top lever talent. So it's more difficult than ever before in recruiting now with the transfer portal, with name, image, and likeness. The extra year of eligibility is affecting high school scholarship allotment. Alabama continuing to dominate where it matters most. Well, you think about, you know, you mentioned, Tom, you know, the frustration that fans have when, when they don't make the college football playoff. Think about where this program was prior to Nick Saban's arrival. For, there was a long stretch there. Oh, yeah. Go back to Gene Stallings winning it here at the Sugar Bowl, the national championship in the early 90s. But they've been in the college football playoff national championship game six of the last seven years. This year they lost two games. I know they had some close wins, but they lost two games, both on the final play. LSU going for two in Tennessee, a field goal uh, to walk off that win in Knoxville. You do wonder, though, with the success of Georgia, if the Bulldogs can win the championship again this year, has Georgia unseated Alabama as the best program consistently in the country? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a great discussion. We saw that in the national title game, a close game down to the very end. The legal formation, kicking team have more than four in the backfield. That five-yard penalty will be assessed from the subsequent spot. First down, media, timeout. It does feel like if Kirby Smart wins the national championship again this year, you got to put that program at the top. But Alabama, they're still sensational. 
All-State Sugar Bowl is brought to you by All-State, reminding you that football season is mayhem. And AT&T 5G, too much college football is never too much. That was the college football playoff semifinal. Jalen Hurts was the quarterback that obviously transferred after that to Alabama. That was the last win in the All-State Sugar Bowl. They also lost in 2014, 2013 season to Oklahoma. And in 2009, 2008 season to Utah, great run by Jace McClellan getting the first down. And, and since 08, Nick Saban talked about it. He still remembered the loss to Utah. He's still upset about it. But look what Alabama's accomplished since 08, over 16 years, six championships, three more national championship game appearances as it's well. It's the level of consistency. And I asked him about that, and he quickly said culture. The culture we've built here, his ability to get guys year in, year out, to show up, be invested, it's been remarkable. Gibbs inside the 30. And you know, some, there's a flag down. Sometimes you think a guy's been around this long. Oh, he acts as a CEO and everybody else does oh the coaching. Nick Saban coaches the defensive backs. We are watching him coaching up individual drills, standing right next to the DBs. I, I was stunned at practice, how involved he was. During the run, the legal block in the back, excuse me, offense is number seven. That penalty will assess from the spot of the foul. First down. Corey Brooks blocking the back and negate that Jameer Gibbs run, but he is so dialed in, so invested with every aspect of this program, including day-to-day -day practice. You're right. I mean, he was he was in a DB stance. I mean, he was getting after it. It was um, it was impressive to watch, to say the least. Culture, attention to detail, accountability, and obviously great players. Yeah, that helps too. Here's Gibbs breaking a tackle. And down to the 31 yard line, gain of six. A lot of people get great players, but do you get the most out of those great players? You get those players to buy in, to be fully developed, and continue to get better and better and push yourself. To me, that's that's the secret in the sauce here, Tom. Oh, it absolutely is because it, these guys are coming into college and there can be entitlement, and everybody's telling them how good they are all the time. Are they willing to work? Do they love football? Is it about their love of football, or what can football do? for them and that's I think the greatest trait of Nick Saban in this staff. Well here's uh, Williams not much and, and what one of the things we, we after our meeting with both Bryce Young and Will Anderson were so yeah. impressed you, you can tell from both those guys there, there is a love of football and that's another reason why they played in this game they, they want the opportunity to compete it's hard for them to sit and I mean Bryce Young's still, still out playing. here right now he's still playing might be the first pick right. in the draft he's out here in the fourth quarter and the game's over. 100%. And that's why it's another thing because it's tougher and tougher to find guys that love football, to Tom's point, not just for colleges, but for the NFL. And there's no question about number nine and 31 for the time. Third and seven. Nearing 11 minutes to go, the play clock winding down. Young has only attempted 20 passes, completed 15, five touchdown passes, hit ball batted in the air and almost picked off by Austin Moore. Job by Robert Hintz inside, getting his hands up. Interior rusher. We've seen him a couple times on some loops. As a defensive lineman, if you can't get to the quarterback, especially inside, get your hand up. Try to get in that throwing lane. Well done by Robert Hintz on third down. Here comes the field goal team. First attempt of the game for Will Reichard. 49 yard try. All time leading score at Alabama. 21 of 25 on the season. And he drills that one. It's 45-13, Alabama. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, celebrating the challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear, more driven inside the Caesars Superdome. And coming up next, the Verbo Fiesta Bowl from Glendale, Arizona. TCU's great offense against that outstanding Michigan defense. It's going to be awesome to watch. Can't wait. What a job by Michigan defensively. Lose their D coordinator, lose the number two overall pick in the draft, second round pick in David Ajabo, first round pick in Dax Hill, and all he did was finish top five in scoring D. Very impressive for Jim Harbaugh. And Max Duggan, man, him, Kendra Miller, Quentin Johnston, 
Going to be a first round pick at that size of wide receiver. It's going to be outstanding to watch that matchup, and especially the second half. How about Michigan, the number one team in the FBS second half scoring margin? When we think about TCU with those five different come from behind victories. The second half of that game, I think, is just going to be fascinating to see how it all unfolds. Michigan, the champions of the Big Ten. TCU lost to Kansas State in the Big 12 title game. But that was the only loss in the season, so the Horned Frogs made the college football playoff. Touchback, Kansas State will start on its 25 yard line. By the way, the offense for Michigan still, That's pretty good. still pretty good. Pretty good. Top 10 in both, top six in both. The defense for TCU struggled as we saw in the Big 12 championship game. How about they lose Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards just steps in and been sensational against Ohio State and against Purdue in the Big Ten championship. That offensive line back to back Joe Moore award winning years and J.J. McCarthy gives them a different dimension offensively. TCU definitely can have their hands full on that side of the ball. That's at four Eastern time so about an hour from now and then you got the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl Georgia and Ohio State in the nightcap sack here. For Alabama, it's Branch, who's probably on defense anyway, the MVP of this game, gets the sack of Howard. Well, he is having just a sensational game. You'll see him work inside. And coming from depth on this blitz, comes underneath Will Howard, nowhere to go with the football, and goes down here once again. Career high 12 tackles. For Brian Branch, got the sack, three tackles for a loss, an interception. He's done it all today. Junior from Fayetteville, Georgia. And a swing pass out past the 21 yard line. Alabama still hitting. That was Jordan Battle after Jackson made the catch. This Alabama defense, this team is not slowing down anytime soon. 13 tackles. The interception, the tackles for loss, he's been all over the field. Howard on third and 13 completes it out past the 30 yard line to Jackson. Getting a chance to play here so fourth down. And Will Howard has been hit a lot in this game but toughing it out. Really a great story one of the most improved players in the country. For Chris Kleiman and I know this is a disappointing end to the season for K-State fans but it does not take away from the type of year they had especially the second half when they were as good as anybody in the country second half of the season and then obviously won the conference championship game first Big 12 title in 10 years. It's a phenomenal year for Kansas State. Will Howard his progression throughout the course of the year. Colin Klein first year Colin plays he was great and Chris Kleiman in year number four he has proven he is the perfect fit at Kansas State. In this game the result should take nothing away from that. McKinstry nice return out past the 30. 63 yard punt 15 yard return Alabama nine minutes away from a win. Chase Young playing likely his final game as a member of the Alabama Crimson Tide. And next stop the NFL although Young is not done yet look from those hugs like maybe. It was over for him. Milrow was warming up, but uh, Bryce Young is back out there, at least for this play. You see Milrow's got his helmet on. We maybe see him come out after this play so he gets a standing right. ovation. Yep. He'll hand it off to Williams. Stood up. No gain on the play. Now Bryce Young big Steph Curry fan we talked a lot about his build kind of similar to a point guard that's what Nick Saban said he plays football like a point guard got a chance to meet Steph Curry his favorite player a few years ago and in his final game as a member of the Crimson Tide he put on a show five touchdown passes next stop National Football League sensational two year run for Bryce Young and an Alabama bowl game tying the record for five touchdown passes. Hard to comprehend the one for four start after what we saw after that. Just masterful performance here this afternoon. So Jalen Milrow is in redshirt freshman from Katy, Texas, who started a game this year when Bryce Young got hurt. You know, a lot of people looked at the numbers this year and said, okay, we well, didn't have as good of a year, but that's not true because 
The yeah. numbers last year were so ridiculous when he won the Heisman Trophy as a first-year starter. But his offensive line wasn't quite as good, didn't have nearly the talent at wide receiver. We've seen some of the young talent, but the pieces around him were not the same as they were a season ago. And I, I think if you really look at the tape, this year every bit as impressive as what he put forth a season ago. Totally agree with you. Milro on third down and seven. And that pass off the marks fourth down. As you look at Price's parents again the thing stood out Craig and Julie Young about their son was when we spoke with him yesterday just had a great presence so likable friendly but competitive and yeah. tough and proud parents there great young man great career could be the first pick in the NFL draft. If you need a quarterback, I don't even think it's a debate. There's some teams that have quarterbacks that <laughs> may, <laughs> may want to look at him. Fair caught at the 28 yard line. Bryce Young. Started dropping dimes long ago in Pasadena, California. Here's his first career touchdown pass. 2008, seven years old. Look at the poise, Ooh. the arm talent. Wow. Right in stride. That, that, that was a double reverse pass <laughs> at seven. Who's that offensive coordinator? That's what I want to know. Very cool footage there, Bryce Young. It was probably very clear early on uh, that he was destined to be something special. And he's been just that in Alabama and much more to come at the next level. 80 career touchdown passes at Alabama in essentially two years. He was the backup to Mac Jones his first season. It's his 27th career start. Second in Alabama history in passing yards. And it will be very interesting over the next few months as his pro day comes and scouts and GMs get a look and has interviews with the defensive players that are considered to be in the top five. Will Anderson, Jalen Carter, maybe some other quarterbacks. There's always somebody that ends up climbing the list that maybe he didn't think of. Will be really interesting to see how it ends up for Bryce Young in the spring. No question about that. I think you just nailed the top three players in this upcoming draft, though. Well, Jalen Carter, we'll get a chance to see him tonight. Defensive tackle for Georgia. Phenomenal from the interior. I know Will Anderson didn't have a huge impact on this game, but he's been wreaking havoc and wrecking offenses the last three years in college football. First, first down for Giddens. Go ahead, Tom. Sorry, yeah, Dusty, I was going to say, uh, with Bryce Young, we talked about some of the intangible traits. As we go through the process, the interview process, the pro day training, all of that stuff, he'll win that day. Because he'll be so good when he's up on the board. He'll be so prepared. Dave, you referenced that. I think preparation and work ethic maybe his two greatest traits. And so when folks start to get in front of him, his stock's only going to go up. Yeah, there, there's no doubt. There's Will Howard in trouble, being chased. And a flag down. Probably going to be holding great to throw, but it's broken up incomplete. I'm curious as you look at Kansas State, like we talked a little bit about Deuce Vaughn maybe yep. being dumb because he can't improve his draft stock if he comes back. Holding offense number 73. Jim Garconi from the previous spot. First down. I mean, maybe by today's standards, Bryce Young isn't undersized, but you know, you think about some of the smaller quarterbacks like Tua and Kyler Murray, they're yep. thicker yep. than Bryce Young. Deuce Vaughn for anybody is yep. small but he's so dynamic we saw that on display today that 88 yard touchdown run no question and versatility and the NFL to be able to catch the football out of the backfield got a little bit not size wise but Christian McCaffrey and his versatility and what he can bring to the field you know if he decides to come out which you know we don't know that for certain yet I think it's going to be I think watching his evaluation process going to be fascinating as well because on the field the production what he's able to do it's it's outstanding uh, but how much will he be doc knock for that lack of overall size at that level and I don't think it's the height so much as it is the weight Dave you referenced it you know Kyler Baker even Russell you know thick jointed thick limbed kids and that's just not his build. 
And Vaughn seems to be done for the day with Giddens getting a bulk of the carries. And first down for Giddens. And pushed out of bounds at the 35. It's a Kansas State program that's here to stay, by the yeah. way. This is their first official New Year's Six game, even though they were in a couple of games under the BCS format that are New Year's Six games, Cotton and Fiesta. This, under Chris Kleiman, there's a culture built at Kansas State where we're going to see this team in the top 20 for a while. No doubt. And he's got championship pedigree. You see Giddens with a nice catch over the middle. Four national championships at North Dakota State. He knows and understands the blueprint. Fantastic football coach. He's a culture guy as well. Everyone has bought in. And everyone knows in Manhattan, outside of Bill Snyder, there hasn't been many, if any, that have had success. And here very early on, Chris Kleiman has had success from his first year and now in year four, his team Big 12 champions. It's And as Oklahoma and Texas transition out, you know, Kansas State's going to be one of those teams it's going to be year in, year out, potentially, at the top of the Big 12. And they beat Oklahoma State when Oklahoma State was playing well. Yeah. 48 to nothing. Yeah. They had three wins against top 10 teams, first time in school history. And it's a 10-win season for them. They'll finish 10-4. and four. One of those losses was to Tulane, which at the time maybe some were like, wow, that's a head scratcher. But Tulane had a great year. They won the American. They're playing USC on Monday. No question. And we saw firsthand just how good they are. Even the what I thought was so impressive this year, after every loss, they bounce back and play one of their best games. Lose to Tulane, go into Norman, Oklahoma, and beat at that time a top five Oklahoma team. Lose to TCU, 48-0 Oklahoma State. Lose to Texas. Good throw, but again dropped. That's twice now for Ben Sennett, mm. or he's dropped the ball. Lost to Texas, and they go to Waco, a tough place to play, and route them. 31-3. I think the and one of the bigger things moving forward is Will Howard, his emergence. I mean, he was he was excellent down the stretch of the season. And as we saw with him yesterday, he's got some confidence to him now. And I would have to imagine that carries into the offseason and into next fall. He, he said one of the reasons he grew in confidence was being around Bryce Young. Yeah. Spent some time. Young is from California. Uh, Howard is from the Philly area, but went out to California, worked with some of the you know, quarterback guys out there and just being around Bryce Young having a chance to talk to him a little bit nice job that time by Brooks he might have gotten into the end zone that was close stepped out before he hit the pylon so it'll be first and goal it's an excellent route here by Philip Brooks a little jerk route starts inside puts his foot in the ground works out immediately as he fights for the end zone Jordan Shippers is into the end zone for the Kansas State touchdown. Fighting to the end, as you would expect from K-State. I think that's exactly right. We know one thing from Kansas State, Chris Kleiman, they're going to fight. And they have fought till the very end. Not quite enough here against a very focused, determined Alabama team to cap this season off the right way. Will be really interesting, though, to continue to watch Kansas State also as Texas and Oklahoma leave the Big 12. Coming up on Monday night, following the Rose Bowl, it's a huge game in the AFC. Cincinnati's won seven in a row. Buffalo's won six in a row. They'll meet at 8.15 Eastern on ESPN, ABC. And other channels. Coverage starts Monday night. Countdown at 7. Joe Burrow playing great football right now. Josh Allen for the Bills. Still first place in the AFC with the Chiefs and those two teams at stake. B the Bengals are rolling right now. Joe Cool in that stadium. Kind of tough not to pick the Bengals in that one. Again, we were talking earlier about how there's a player that climbs a draft board that maybe you weren't thinking about. How about going into the year LSU won the championship? It's like a sixth, seventh round pick. Maybe he, if, if and there are some that didn't have, have him get he drafted. Agent. And he ended up being the first overall pick and is one of the best players in football right now. Those three teams you referenced, Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen leading those teams. Ooh, that is some unbelievable young talent at the quarterback spot in the AFC. And it shows if you get the right guy, you can yep. get good quickly. So that's why I'd be curious to see if Houston gets the first pick. They won last week. And if they do, do they select Bryce Young? Jameer Gibbs 
spinning around and brought down at the 25. Don't forget to tune in to the Ram Trucks post game directly following the game. Trophy presentation. Some of the most outstanding players in the history of the All-State Sugar Bowl. Archie Manning, Herschel Walker, Dan Marino, Todd Blackledge, our oh, how about that? Bo Jackson, Baker Mayfield, Jalen Hurts, Tim Tebow, Zeke Elliott, and you have to think Bryce Young is going to join them. Brian Branch is in the conversation for the game he had on defense, but Bryce Young had six incompletions and five touchdowns. Yeah, it's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. That'll probably get him the award. That's an illustrious list of names you just rattle off there, Mr. Pash. Just kind of shows how prestigious this bowl game is. And I thought that's, you know, when, when we talked with the Alabama coaches, the Alabama players yesterday, you could tell it's a Sugar Bowl. I mean, it's a Sugar Bowl. It's an important game. I just love the mindset. Look, if you want to opt out, you want to not play, not put yourself in jeopardy, fine. But man, we should praise the players that say, you know what, I'm going to finish what I start. I'm going to go out there and compete to the very end with my teammates. Absolutely love the mindset of both of these teams here today. No row out there. Quarterback hands off for Roydell Williams, who's up to the 24. Don't forget Verbo Fiesta Bowl, start of the college football playoff is next. And Max Duggan, last time we saw him, almost single-handedly won the game for TCU. They came up short. Obviously didn't touch it, with except the exception of taking the snap on the last play on the goal line stand for Kansas State. We'll see if TCU can bounce back against the great Michigan team up next. Kendra Miller's phenomenal, but I got to be honest, I'm still scratching my head. The fact that Max Duggan didn't touch it on either of those final two plays in that championship game, but give Kansas State and that front credit. They answered the bell and they got the stop as they took home the championship trophy. So what has to happen for TCU first and then later for Ohio State to pull what many would call an upset over Michigan and Georgia respectively? Well, I think that you got to slow down Michigan's rushing attack. Like that's it's going to be the biggest key because and you have to do it without dedicating too many bodies or else they're going to hit play action passes and take their shots down the field. I think that's where it starts. And Max Duggan to me the equalizer is his ability to run with the football. He's got to make plays whether it's designed quarterback run game, the read game, or he just breaks the pocket and makes a play. I think his ability to make plays with his legs is going to be a huge factor in that ball game. Jamarion Miller, true freshman, to the 39. And for Ohio State, like my question is, can they match the physicality of Georgia? Georgia's a bully. Georgia up front, offensive, defensive line, they're a bully. And we saw Ohio State on their home field get bullied by Michigan. So that's really my question in that game. If Ohio State can match that physicality at the line of scrimmage, C.J. Stroud, those receivers, Marvin Harrison Jr., they're going to give them an opportunity. I just I question if they'll be able to do that. It's going to be fun to watch tonight. Tell you, Dusty, I think it helps Georgia defensively knowing where the quarterback and C.J. Stroud is going to be because he's not a runner. Yeah. That helps Georgia. Miller got the corner. Past the 40 and scoots out near the 20 yard line. True freshman Jamarion Miller, Tyler, Texas at 30 carries all year. They compare him to Josh Jacobs. Nice bounce and vision. And you see the burst from Miller. And you can tell Bill O'Brien very excited about what he brings to the table. That's quite a comp from a coach, isn't it? Right. I mean, Josh you, Jacobs. Ooh. Bill O'Brien saying that. Something special. Second year for O'Brien as the offensive coordinator here with Alabama. They were sixth in the country in yards per carry. And again, that was uh, a lot of that was Jameer Gibbs as Miller is to the 20 yard line. We'll see if that's the final play. Be surprised if they snap it again. Great year for Kansas State. And I know if you're an Alabama fan, your season doesn't end with a trophy, but still, 11 wins for the 12th consecutive year two losses by four points against Tennessee and LSU both walk off wins for the opponent say that again 11 wins for the 12th straight year wow Not and shabby. they despite not making the college football playoff came in to this game with a mindset 
to finish the season strong and boy did they do that. 45 to 20 Alabama over Kansas State in the 89th annual All State Sugar Bowl. 12 straight and 13 of the last 14 years winning 11 games that's the most in history over a 14 season span. You got Mark Ingram there the former Heisman Trophy Heisman winner interviewing a Heisman interviewing a Bryce Young the Heisman Trophy winner 2021. We'll be back with the trophy ceremony and the MVP of the Allstate Sugar Bowl. Back in a minute. Alabama wins at 45 to 20. This game from Caesars Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. The 89th annual Allstate Sugar Bowl is in the books. Alabama playing in it for a record 17th time and getting its 10th win. Fifth ranked Crimson Tide over number nine Kansas State, 45 to 20. Dave Pash, Dusty DeVore, check in the booth. Tom Luganville down on the field. Tom's going to have interviews here shortly. The way this game started, yeah. with Kansas State up 10 0 and Bryce Young struggling one for four, but it's as if that 88 yard touchdown run by Deuce Vaughn completely woke up Alabama because it was all Crimson Tide and Bryce Young after that. It woke up a sleeping giant. Then, obviously, right before halftime, you know, for Alabama to get that stop after a 10 minute drive by Kansas State. Felt like Kansas State may take a lead into half, and then in under a minute, Alabama goes 98 yards, scores, scores twice within the first two minutes of the second half. This game flipped so quickly as Alabama, you know, really flexed and showed they meant business showing up here in New Orleans and finishing off their season the right way. Bryce Young finishes with six incompletions and five touchdowns 321 passing yards on just 21 attempts and Alabama finishes the year 11 and 2 12th straight year with 11 wins they have not had a three loss season since 2010 and Bryce Young again after a slow start had only three incompletions the rest of the way after three incompletions in his first four tries he was money and just some superb passes by Bryce Young here today as you see so good being poised in the pocket and locating the open man and he had a couple of throws the ball placement was absolutely exemplary throughout the course of this game you know Nick Saban told us talking to his players about playing in these games you can add value for yourself and that's exactly what Bryce Young did today as he's about to go through the NFL draft process coming out here playing showing his leadership showing his love for football and showing exactly what he brings at the quarterback position I mean added value check yeah. for Bryce Young as he puts a record-setting performance for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Saban told us his philosophy is the best way to help yourself is to play football. Yeah. That, yeah, the combine's important, all the stuff you do after that, yeah, it's important, but you're ultimately evaluated most in how you play football. And you help yourself by playing great. And again, if you're, if Houston gets the first pick, the franchise in need of a quarterback, you have to think Bryce Young is in the mix and maybe Maybe even a decision's already been made. Who knows? We've seen that before. Where even at this stage of the year, teams, if they know they're going to be number one, they know who they're taking. But uh, remains to be seen over the next few months. I don't. 45 20 is the final score. Alabama wins. We are talking about all the traits that Bryce possesses. You were talking about his preparation. And I'm trying to decide what's best about him. Because his escapability, ball placement, it's tough to beat that aspect as well. All right, let's go down to Tom. You can see there with Nick Saban and Bryce Young in the area. Thank you and congratulations to the University of Alabama Crimson Tide, the 2022 All-State Sugar Bowl champions. I'd like to introduce Lloyd Frischertz, president of all state Lloyd welcome everyone on behalf of the all state sugar bowl committee 
I am honored to recognize the winner and champion of the 89th All-State Sugar Bowl. I want to congratulate the winning team, Alabama Crimson Tide, and the great coach, Nick Saban. <laughs> Along with the team, the players, the university, and all the great fans that have come here to share in this moment with the winning team, Alabama Crimson Tide, and the great city of New Orleans. Well done. Thank you, Lloyd. We also introduce President of Property Liability, Allstate Insurance Company, Mario Rizzo. Some words from you. Sure thing. First of all, thanks everyone for coming out. And on behalf of Allstate and our outstanding employees and agents from across the country, I want to congratulate both teams on a great effort today and on all the success they had throughout this past season. And it is my honor to present the winning trophy for this year's All-State Sugar Bowl to Coach Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Coach Nick Saban with the Sugar Bowl Championship Trophy. Coach, you've said you felt your team really prepared well for this moment. You know you'd been in this moment before and hadn't played as well. How would you assess the performance of this team in their preparation and how they performed here today? Well, I think the guys that were here today, the team that was here today, really is representative of what the University of Alabama and our program is all about. They all made a commitment and made a great sacrifice to prepare for this game. They worked hard and certainly played well today, and I'm really, really proud of them. What does it say about your football team when your best overall players are your best leaders and your most accountable players? Well, that's when you have the best teams, when you have guys that are great players who care about their, their teammates. Uh, they set a great example, and they do a great job in terms of being leaders and caring about their teammates. So I'd also like to thank our fans. This is a great group of fans we have here today that supported the team that represents the university. Coach, thank you very much. I want to get Ralph Capitelli over here, executive committee chair for the Sugar Bowl, the All-State Sugar Bowl, to announce the MVP of the 2022 Sugar Bowl. We're so happy to present the most outstanding player award to Bryce Young. Congratulations, Bryce. We're in a climate right now in college football where there's a lot of choices to be made. Not all of them include the team. When you decided to play with your teammates, what could be the last time, what went into that decision? Uh, not too much, to be honest with you. Um, I'm, I'm blessed to have the teammates that I do. Uh, and these are my brothers. You know, we, I got presented with the opportunity to play with them. And, you know, I, I couldn't pass that down. Um, you know, we. We, we pride ourselves in leadership. We pride ourselves in, in making sure we're doing everything for the team and, and our standard, and I live by that. So I was just blessed to have the opportunity that I did to play today, and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for the guys I have. Started off a little bit slow, right? A little, not quite on the same page with your teammates offensively. Then you get the shot to Jameer Gibbs for the big game. It seemed to break things open. How did you guys get back on track as a football team? Yeah, I think we just we trust each other. Um, you know, it, it wasn't always perfectly smooth, especially at the beginning. But you know, through ups and downs, we, we've always leaned on each other throughout the year. Um, again, I have all the confidence in the world in my guys, and you know, we lean on each other. We play for each other. So, um, you know, when things aren't looking too good, we, we we know we can lean on each other, and, and we did that today. You came into this class when you were a freshman as the number one ranked quarterback coming out of high school. You may be leaving your college career as the number one ranked quarterback on NFL draft boards. What's it taken for you to get from that point? to now? 
Um, just just buying into the process. Um, I, I've listened to coach, um, and I, I've been blessed to have the teammates I do around me. And you know, all the success that I have, you know, if whatever personal accolades come, I, I can't do that without my teammates, without my coaches, um, you know, my family and all the supporters. So um, you know, I'm I'm really just grateful for everyone, and and also for the the support of the fans and, and everyone in, at Alabama Nation. Um, you know, those who that's who pushes me, and, and that's the reason I am who I am. Thanks, man. Go enjoy this with your teammates. Appreciate you. Bryce Young, the MVP of the 2022 All-State Sugar Bowl. What a great way to end 2022 as we embark on 2023. Tomorrow, Alabama Crimson Tide, the Kansas State Wildcats. Congratulations to both teams and their 2022 seasons. And congratulations to the University of Alabama football. Enjoy your New Year's. Be safe. We'll see you in 2023. Reese Davis.